United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any additions, deletions, or substitutions? Yes, Madam Chair, I'll ask that the clerk read those items into the record. Okay. All right, so for under the consent agenda, we're moving items 2A and 2B. Those items were on consent by default because of the classification under boards and presentations. That's typically, un, it typically falls under consent, but in this case, it needs to be dealt with separately. So that was nothing malicious by staff. It just, the system itself defaults that way. So those will be moved to the regular to the regular uh, agenda. So 2A will become 6E as an egg. 2B will become 6D as in David. We also have an addition, a proclamation from the office of Dr. Botel in cooperation with the mayor. It's let's move Palm Beach County. That's going to be item 6C as in Charlie. Item 11A. It's going to be completely deleted. What number? Which one you said? 11A. So we put resolutions on your desk there that had a couple of edits to it, but the manager has decided we're just going to delete it and bring it back. That's 11A as an apple. And you said that 2A would be 6E as an egg, and 2B will be 6D as in dog? Yes. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I'm wondering if we could put item 11C, which is simply the acceptance of grant funding in the tune of $90,000 on the consent agenda. You want to put 11C under consent? Yes. Anyone um, have any issue with that? All right, Ms. Uh, Smith, 11C, where would it go? Which yeah, it would be added to consent. But what, are you going to keep it at the same number? Yes. Okay. All right, any other additions, deletions, substitutions? No, Madam Chair, that's it from staff. Okay. <laughs> All right, any disclosures by council? I'm none. All right. We have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Check it. Madam Clerk. Councilperson Lawson. Yes. Councilperson Botel. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Chair Pro Tem Lanier. Yes. Chairperson Miller Anderson. Yes. That vote passes, Madam Chair. All right. For the consent agenda, all matters listed under this item are considered to be routine and action will be taken by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council person so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Um, I believe Dr. Botel already moved one of the items to our consent, 11C. Anyone else? I already have a motion to accept the consent agenda. Motion to agenda. accept the consent agenda. Second. Madam Clark? Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Botel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Lanier? Yes. Chairperson Miller Anderson? Yes. That vote passes, Madam Chair. All right. Um, number six, awards and presentation, 6A. Excuse me, Madam Chair? Yes. I have an announcement under number five, under, under communications. Okay, it was, it was crossed out on my. I apologize. Um, you guys should have gotten a correspondence from the city manager's office regarding election night. Just to make the public aware, even though the city itself does not have a, a municipal election on March 14th, we still partner with the Palm Beach County Supervisors of Elections Office for them to use our parking lot as a drop-off site for North County um, polling places. So election night, you will see a tent um, in the parking lot, there'll be PBSO Sheriff's Office and I think Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Um, Mrs. Link staff staffs that as well. So there's nothing from the city that's required. They just use our parking lot as a way for people to drop off for the precinct clerks. Okay. 
All right, item 6A. <clears throat> Madam Chair, at this time, if I can have the interim city clerk, Ms. Tawana Smith, to make this presentation. All right. Um, 6A is the item. We discussed it during a agenda. I'm sorry, Ms. Smith. Did you want to just read the title? I didn't read the title. That's, yeah, that's what I was fine. waiting on. Streamlining the process of signing resolutions for the mayor and city council. Thank you. You're welcome. So what this is, is a, it's more of a informational item. We're letting you know if it's okay with you all that we're going to be streamlining our signature page for the resolutions. So moving forward, it would only require the clerk, the city attorney, and the mayor. Your votes will be recorded on there as well as your uh, motions. But this is to help us speed up the process of getting resolutions back to the departments as well as their contracts. So as we move with our new water plants and things of that nature, this is gonna help us get things done quicker. But your ordinances will stay the same because the charter requires us to have all of your signatures on the ordinance. All right. Any questions or comments? Any um, public comment items for that? No? No. All right. Item 6B. 6B, Madam Chair, is a proclamation from the Office of the Mayor recognizing March 6th through 10th, 2023 as National Fl Flood Awareness Week. Our Community Development Department does have a brief presentation and an award that they're going to share with us. All right. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening. Uh, members of council, honorable mayor, Madam Attorney, my name is Clarence Sermons, Director of Development Services for the City of Riviera Beach. Uh, the uh, department is uh, proud to provide you with updates on the progress the city has made in the way of floodplain management over the past year. And to give you some uh, quick details on our accomplishments, I will yield the floor to Operations Manager Grace Joyce. Good evening, Madam Chair, Good Mayor, evening. Council Members, and City Manager Evans. Um, we're here tonight to talk about flood or recognition of Flood Awareness Week. As you may know, the City of Riviera Beach is a participant in the National Flood Insurance Program and is a voluntary participant in the Community Rating System Incentive Program. By our participation in CRS, we agree to adopt, enforce, and participate in flood management activities that exceed the NFIP requirements. CRS classes are rated from nine to one, with one being the highest. Each CRS class improvement produces a 5% greater discount on flood insurance for our property owners. City staff completed our CRS cycle certification in 2022. FEMA recognized our improved efforts and we received the class rating of eight, which is one step higher than we were nine. And we'd like to present this to, to the council and the city at large. And basically, FEMA says, the community has undertaken a series of meaningful activities to protect its citizens from losses caused by flooding and has significantly, significantly exceeded the requirements for NFIP participation and effective floodplain management. So this is a big deal for us. It's really difficult to move up in a class rating. Um, what this means for our citizens as a whole is about a $77,000 savings in, in floodplain insurance. It's our goal to improve our rating again by one class um, during our recertification this May. Increasing our community outreach can get us where we need to go, get, get us those additional points. We need to continue to educate our citizens on the hazards of flooding and how to protect themselves and their property from flood events Proclaiming March 6th through the 10th Flood Awareness Week will bring us closer to that goal. Thank you. 
Thank you. Madam. Yes. The mayor is gonna read the proclamation. All right. Yes. Go ahead. Declaring the week of March 6th to 10th, 2023 as Flood Awareness Week. Whereas the city of Riviera Beach has experienced severe weather in the past in the form of extreme rainfall and tropical system events resulting in flooding in both coastal and non-coastal low-lying areas. And this flooding has caused damage and flood losses to homes and buildings in all areas, whether they are high risk, special flood areas, low or moderate risk flood zones. And whereas the city of Riviera Beach is voluntary participant in the National Flood Insurance Program that provides residents the opportunity to protect themselves against the flood loss and the purchase of flood insurance at reduced insurance premium rates, as well as setting higher regulatory standards to reduce the flood risk and potential flood damage to their property. And whereas the re reduction of loss of life and property damage can be achieved with appropriate flood preparedness control mitigation measures are taken before a flood. And where, whereas public education and awareness and potential weather hazards and methods of protection are cr critical to the health, safety, and welfare of residents. The Florida Flood Plain Managers Association, FEMA, has declared the week of March 6th through 10th, 2023, as Flood Awareness Week to promote awareness and increase knowledge of flood risk, the availability of flood insurance, flood protection methods, and how to prepare for emergencies. Now, therefore, it is finally resolved that I, Ronnie L. Felder, City Mayor of the City of Rivera Beach, Palm Beach County, by the power invested in me by the residents of Rivera Beach, do hereby proclaim in coordination with Palm Beach County, Florida Department of Environmental Protection Services, Northern Palm Beach County, Improvement District, and South Florida Water Management District, that March 6th through 10th, 2023, shall be known as Flood Awareness Week in the City of Rivera Beach. In witness whereof, I have in two set my hand and caused the official seal of the city of Rivera Beach to be fixed on this first day of March, 2023 AD. Any questions or comments regarding this item? Yes, go one ahead. More, just one more comment, Madam Chair. I just would like to um, uh, thank Ms. Grace Joyce and the staff that have um, engaged in a lot of arduous efforts to get the city to this uh, level eight um, with this proclamation and the future publicity campaign that we have uh, for the coming flood pain awareness week. We are hoping to improve the city's rating one more time this coming year. So thank you all for your support in the proclamation. All right, thank you. All right, item 6C. Madam Chair, 6C is a proclamation from the office of Dr. Botel with Let's Move. All right, Dr. Botel. Thank you. Proclamation from the office of Mayor Ronnie Felder in support of Councilwoman Dr. Julia Botel, District 4, declaring March 2023 as Let's Move Palm Beach County Month. Whereas the city of Riviera Beach takes special notice and acknowledges exceptional organizations that help residents who live, work, and play within the jurisdiction. And whereas the 2010 Digital Vibes was founded to reach out to underserved youth in Palm Beach County by empowering them through dance, fitness, technology, and the arts. And whereas Digital Vibes partners with the Palm Health Foundation annually to host the Let's Move Commit to Change Physical Activity Challenge, a countywide initiative that focuses on physical activity, nutrition, and healthy behaviors. And whereas Digital Vibes Inc. and Palm Health Foundation present the annual challenge, which takes place annually from March 1st to 31st and encourages individuals within and beyond Palm Beach County to take charge of their health by participating in fun fitness exercises. And whereas the Let's Move initiative was initially introduced on a national level by First Lady Michelle Obama in 2010 with the goal of decreasing childhood obesity throughout the United States since nearly one in three children in the United States are overweight or obese. And if this problem persists, one third of all children born in 2000 or later will suffer from diabetes at some point in their lives or will face other obesity related health problems such as heart disease, high blood pressure, asthma and cancer. And whereas Digital Vibes and the Palm Health Foundation invite all residents to take the challenge to move by forming teams, registering online, committing to exercises for exercising for at least 30 minutes a day throughout the month of March, and logging their minutes on the Let's Move website, www.letsmovepbc.org. That's www 
letsmovepbc.org. In 2012, Palm Beach County logged 100,000 minutes in the first year of the challenge, and we have met the challenge each year since, rising in 2021 to over 59 million minutes logged. Now, therefore, I, Julie Botel, on behalf of Ronnie Felder, Mayor of Riviera Beach, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of March as Let's Move Palm Beach County Month and urge all citizens to join us in moving to improve their fitness, mental health, and overall health. Proclaim this first day of March 2023. All right. Any public comments, cards for these? No, this one. Here. All right. Any questions or comments from the board? All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Botel. Now 6D. So 6D, Madam Chair, appears on your agenda as 2B. This is gonna be the selection of the new city council chairperson and chair pro tem for March 2023 through March 2024. We will go through the process of making the selection tonight. But if you look in your backup, the chairperson and the, the new chairperson and new chair pro tem will take effect at the next meeting, March 15th. And as I indicated to you guys in agenda review, we will have to administer a new oath. So whoever the new chair is and um, that takes the new oath, we have an option. We can do it tonight. I know that some of you all like the flexibility of having someone else administer your oath. So if that's the case, we can do it next week at the next week meeting on the 15th. Madam Chair. Yes. I'd like to nominate Shirley Lanier as chair. Okay, but the floor is even open. So uh, Madam Chair, Let's yes. figure out a process first before we have just what occurred with Councilwoman Botel, because simply it seems that it's always a race to announce on the record who the nomination goes to, as opposed to setting forth a process as to how it works. So can we do that? Sure. Ms. Smith. Madam Chair, the process would be we'll open the floor for nominations. Once we take the nominations, if there's a second, we will vote on it. If not, it would die for lack of a second, and then we will move to the next nomination. Right. So it's the same in the past. Are you guys looking to do something different? Okay. No. So the floor is now open for the nomination for chair. I nominate Shirley sure. Lanier. There's a, there's a nomination on the floor for Shirley Lanier as chair for 2023 through 2024. Yes. I think it's, it's proper. No, no, no. Hold on. No, no. I think it's, am I got volume? I think it's proper to first be acknowledged. And I said, said Madam Chair. So does, who's running this meeting? Is it the clerk? Because as soon as she said that, the clerk responded. I thought it's proper to, to at least wait to be acknowledged by the chairperson. That's what is supposed to be the case. So if you don't mind, Madam Chair, I would like to restate Madam Chair to ask for the floor for nomination. So Madam Chair, I believe I was uh, acknowledged when I first nominated Ms. Lanier. If you'd like, I can ask to be asked to be acknowledged again. Madam Chair? Yes. Thank you. I would like to nominate Shirley Lanier as chair. Second. Mr. McCoy? Madam Chair, so yes. this is why it gets so confusing, because you clearly have members on the South that's going to do what they want to do. This isn't a process to make seconds. That's why I was asking that the rules be clearly laid out because apparently after, you know, we just went through this, it's not clear that we're just making nominations and not an actual motion. And specifically, I don't understand the rational of how you're recognizing somebody who hasn't even been acknowledged. That's why instead of jumping straight to it, I waited until, you know, there's an opportunity to be acknowledged. I mean, there's no sense of us even playing out this whole chairperson and vice chair if this is the way it's going to operate. Because I can tell you right now, it doesn't give anybody, at least me, any kind of confidence in this process, or even in the, the, the chairperson's ability to govern this meeting. You I mean, like, put, what are we doing here? Is there going to be a process, or that's why we really need a parliamentarian? Because apparently, if you, Madam Chair, respectfully allow this to continue to occur, then we need to have the parliamentarian here. Mr. Because McCoy. you can't set forth rules, and then the moment she's finished talking, the gentlewoman from the south end of the room is... Is, is just taking advantage of the floor. Do you want to provide your nomination? I, I would like to know that. Okay, put your nomination out there then. Be followed because I'm calling in the question of rules. The same way we've done it before. The same way we've done it before. Okay, but Madam Chair, there was no acknowledgement by this person, well, by you to that person. That's why I'm saying that, Madam Chair. So simply, is this is the process that we're going to continue to do, then I don't have any confidence. 
So are you going to allow this to follow the process prescribed by the clerk? Whatever she just said. Yeah. Okay. Madam Clerk. Madam Chair, there's a motion on the floor made by Councilperson Botel and seconded by yourself to appoint Ms. Shirley Lanier as the chairperson for 2020. I did not make a second. Ms. Lanier Ms. made Lanier, the second. I apologize. Ms. Lanier made the second. All right. Madam Chair, we do not have any public comment cards on this item. Do you want me to go ahead and call the vote? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I guess yeah. the concern that uh, Councilman McCoy addressed was that the process and the policy was not followed in regards to it being acknowledged from the floor. And as the chair, I would, I would want the acknowledgement to be done because Councilwoman Botel clearly just made her announcement versus asking for acknowledgement. And I think that was with clarity that Councilman McCoy was stating. So I just wanted absolute clarity because the only person that asked for, that asked for acknowledgement from this floor was Councilman McCoy prior to the, the request for a chair nomination from <coughs> Councilwoman Botel. So, Madam Chair. And I think, if I can finish. So I, th I think for clarity's sake, the, the reasoning behind that was that the vote would be based upon the order of the nomination and Councilwoman Botel's urge to jump out there and make a nomination is just based on the process of doing it the right way regardless of how we've done it in the past. I just want to make sure we're doing it the proper way every time moving forward. And I would disagree with Councilman McCoy. I don't believe we need a parliamentary. I believe we just need to have the proper rules in order by whoever's running and governing the meeting. So given the opportunity prior to us moving forward, I want to nominate myself for chair because I will take the time to alleviate the cost of money to the city for adding a parliamentary, doing the proper training necessary to run and facilitate the meetings properly and move forward. So I'll make that nomination for myself, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. Would you please clarify for me? Was I acknowledged by the chair? No. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Here's the thing, guys. Excuse I am not doing this tonight. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I am not doing this foolishness tonight. I'm not. We have not called anyone in the audience, please. Please keep your voices down. One second, ma'am. Okay, one second. Ms. Smith? I just announced that we didn't have any public comment cards on this item and that the acceptance was closed. Okay, thank you. All right. So, <coughs> go ahead. Ma'am, please. I am going to have to have you removed if you keep talking from the audience. All right, Ms. Ms. Smith. So we have Ms. Lanier and Mr. Lawson put his out as well. Do we have a second on the one for Mr. Lawson? See, that's, Madam Chair, point of order. And I'm going to invoke Robert's rules of order because specifically what the clerk is doing is completely out of line. She's asking for a second on the motion. What was started off at this conversation started off by the floor is open for nomination. You submit a name, not a motion. And that's what I'm trying to get you to. And it seems that Councilwoman Botel has made a motion. Councilwoman Lanier has seconded. What I'm suggesting to you, Mayor, that's a violation of what we just set forth in the process. So I'm going to ask you, under Robert's Rules of Order, that this point of order be decided by the chairperson. In the alternative, Robert's Rules of Order calls that an override vote can be done of the chairperson. So it's on you, Madam Chair, and I'm asking that this be resolved. Ms. Um, Ms. Wynn, do you have anything to add to this matter? Madam Chair, mm -hmm. when you make a call for nominations, it is just that. You don't require a second. Once the nominations are closed, then a motion is made for either one or the other and seconded. All right. So we have Ms. Lanier and Mr. Lawson. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, this is, I think, the third time I restate my point of order yes. because you have not resolved the issue. Apparently, you seemingly. want them to take their motion back and their second back so is basically you're gonna, what you're asking for at this point because the two names are out there. That's so, what you're saying, right? Madam Chair, are you not going to resolve the point of order? Because I think I was very clear. It was just restated by 
Councilman Lawson, and then the attorney just restated it. But they all they are you going to resolve the back. point of order? They're going to take back their motion and their second, and those two names have been put out for nominations. Okay, so I will like to ask the city attorney the question. Is Go that ahead. okay? Miss mm -hmm. Wynn, I know that's not really your wheelhouse, but you have some familiarity with uh, Robert's Rules of Order, but shouldn't points of orders and matters relating to the rules be resolved by the chairperson? That's correct. And in the alternative that the chair chooses not to or chooses to vote, I guess, uh, or decides in the alternative, what's the options afforded? When you say decide in the alternative, you mean not to weigh in on the question? Correct. It, it can be by a vote of the, the majority vote of the council. But okay. Mr. McCoy, can I ask, Madam Chair, can I ask Mr. McCoy for some clarification? Yes. Is the point of order that you're discussing the, the, the principle of the chair acknowledging who asked to speak first? N not necessarily. Because I don't um, understand what, what the point of order is. I think we started off with Councilperson Botel making a motion to nominate Shirley Lanier, but that's not proper because that's not before the body. What is before the body is the floor being open for nominations of chair, which is completely two separate things. And it's very important that we resolve that. And apparently, you know, it's not being clear. So I'm asking that this point be resolved either by the chairperson or in the alternative, we bring it back to the board to decide on. But do know that Robert's Rules of Order is sanctioned and required by our, by our charter. And it's required. I think it that. is resolved because we just said that they are going to take back their motion. Yes. And if they, they want to open their, their mouth and yes. say that themselves, yes. that would take care of that. So I don't know what part you're still wanting to be resolved. Right, that, Madam Chair. You're yes. not resolving it, though. Yes. Yes, yes, it doesn't exist anymore if they're taking it back. How would it still be relevant? Okay, so apparently you're, you're, we're not at the same place, but I was asking and hoping that you would resolve the issue to tell Councilwoman Botel that her her motion is not in order and it's improper. You can resolve that issue on itself. She you just deferred to her a responsibility that's vested with the chairperson. Mr. McCoy. Okay, we can debate this. But I know we can, but you. this is what I'm saying to so you. So you don't want to have, you don't want to make the decision? I'm not going to play this game with you. No, I'm not playing the game. And they I don't know why are you think taking that. back their motion and their second. Yes. Dr. Botel? But my nomination stands. Right. Your nomination is Ms. Lanier. Mr. Lawson's nomination is Mr. Lawson. Now, anyone else has any nominations they want to put out there? Yes, I nominate Frederick McCoy. Okay. Anyone else? All right. So, Madam Clerk, from now on, what we're moving to at this point on voting on the names as they were put out there, Shirley, Doug, and Trotter. Correct? Everybody good we with have, that? We have three names? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So, so is there going to be any public comments or debate? or None were put in. So, what about any from the... Hmm? What about from the members? Okay, go ahead and write it because we did move it. We moved it, but it was on consent. So it was always on the agenda. You may not have been here when we did that. Okay, but that doesn't have anything to do with us. So if you want to put your card in, go ahead and put it in because I don't want people saying that we're not allowing people to participate. But it was already on the agenda under consent and we moved it to regular. Anyone else that needs to put their card in, this is, and we're closing it off again. The acceptance of public comment cards for this item are closed. Madam Chair, you have three. You have Ms. Anna Vergney, Ms. Lady March, and Ms. Cindy March. First would be Ms. Anna Bergney. Um, my name is Anna Bergney and I live Good in Lakeview Park. Um, I have issues with processes across the city 
And it's kind of sad because I go back and forth with Mr. Evans on processes, and yet we can't get the basics for the board to follow. That's kind of embarrassing to the community. But also, as I watch this happen again, which I see it coming based on you creating the conflict that you're good at creating, you just created another conflict for this board, and clearly the decision has already been made. And that's insulting to the men in this room that run the city. But you do it every time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next is Miss Lady March, followed by Miss Cindy March. Lady March Goldwire. Um, I just want to go on a record and say that um, initially, Doug was looked over when he was due in rightful order for the chair the last couple of times. And it was disgusting then, it's disgusting now. I think we've moved or seen ourselves move in a space for the city where the advocates, the people who put you guys in office are looking for somebody to advocate on their behalf and with no disrespect to Mr. Lawson. I think at the end of the day, we are in the fight of our lives and require someone who is willing to stand in the paint and fight relentlessly regardless of whether or not he's supported or not um, with the decisions that he's making. I agree with Anna. We all know at the end of the day that this is already determined that you guys have been shuffling the chair seat and the vice chair seat back and forth between the three of you for the last three years. You already know what the outcome is going to be before you start. And everybody can be smug across the face and move the way they do. But the beautiful thing about all of it the absolute beautiful thing about it is shit just takes care of itself. It's going, to, it's going to work out. Regardless of how you guys play it out, it's going to work out. And so I just want to give some encouragement to the people who watch at home, the people who respond to our podcast, the people who feel like there is no hope. It's going to, man, it's going to work itself out. You guys know if you're out here watching what's happened to utility bills, if you're watching what's happening and what's not hap doing right under sunshine law and all of these things, the only person that's going to take the time to go out and fight on behalf of the residents is Mr. Uh, McCoy. And Mr. Doug Lawson is a firm second behind that. The only reason that I'm not super adamant about it being him is because he is a Profound businessman has his hands in a lot of things right now, and I know those things may end up taking precedence, but I would like to see people give consideration to Mr. McCoy for this chairship because it's unfair to see it dominated by you three women. Y'all been playing back and forth right in front of our faces. It's so, so very disrespectful, so disrespectful, and maybe it works for y'all, but it's not working for the people who elected you. So I'm just looking forward to see what the it working out or it will work like, work out looks like for you guys in the end. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cindy March. I don't want to see Lanier because she don't know what decorum means, just like Kashama Miller. I do by Trojan McCoy and as well as Doug Lawson. I don't know why and why y'all don't understand Motel is not a threat to the citizens of a Revere Beach that was born and raised here. She need to recuse herself a long time ago because the racial display that she has given to this city is not acceptable no more. And whatever you do in the dark, it's going to come to the light. Whoever be the chair, let me put this on record. If Lanier be the chair, we want a drug test. And I guarantee you she won't pass. I guarantee you she won't pass it. And I'm not defaming her character. I'm calling a spade a spade. The only person up there that really knows that charter and knows that charter well, you can hate his temperament, and I say it all the time, is Trojan McCoy. Y'all don't play the chess game with among the three of you all, and y'all are bags of dumb rocks. We're sick and we're tired. You're sitting up there grinning, but let me let you know something. The people that goes out and vote, they're watching this. They might not be at this meeting, like that meeting overflow in the other room for people who don't look like us, but our city is hurting. Mr. Evans, our city is hurting. We request if Lanier become the chair, she needs to go take a drug test because she failed two drug tests before. 
Thank you. All right, that's in, right? Okay. So, Comment. Madam Chair. Yes. Do we need a motion to, uh, do we need a motion? We, no. No, we don't, okay. Yes. Do we have discussion? Yes, you can go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, members, I would certainly implore you to, um, that you would uh, support my nomination uh, for chairperson. And I, I preference that by my time here at this organization. In fact, I've spent probably over the last decade in public service of some sort, be it here local government and at the state. Not only that, and, and you know, I'm really hard pressed to even discuss this, but I think it's almost pertinent to that, that I bring it up. But particularly, I think we already know that, you know, Miller Anderson, you as well as Lanier and Botel has all served as chair. But importantly, right, this is my concern. We seem to like cross over every single year with this optimism of some sort of new year, a fresh start or a resolution or some sort of redemption. But that almost immediately gets shot down in the month of March when we have these very contentious and politically driven nominations for various positions and committees throughout the city. You know, and to that point, right, I'll share with you why I can't support uh, Pro Tem Lanier. You know, me along with other members of the public attended an audit committee meeting just two weeks ago. And this is as subject to a circuit court lawsuit that councilperson Shirley Lanier just does what she wants to do and disregards the rule regardless, right? And I'll read to you specifically from that complaint why I don't think she should be the chairperson. The defendant Lanier, who has served as an elected member of the city, as elected member in the city of Riviera Beach since 2019, facilitated the meeting and refused to allow public comments. Instead, defendant Lanier stated, I am fried right now. What that means, I don't know. There was a lot of paperwork. Moments later, a motion in the second was made by members of the committee to remove determination um, for the audit auditor from for the city of Riviera Beach and subsequent later the meeting was adjourned without having public comments. You know, it's like, I, I, I don't understand what we do, but I do know our first charge is to the statutes and to the code of ordinances. And 286 of Florida statute represents sunshine. I would venture to say that, you know, that's not just something that was violated at the audit committee meeting when you make actions or take actions before a body and you don't allow public comments. But certainly I believe that that may have been the case here tonight because clearly it's already dictated and the second came out before it even lasts. But those are those reasons why I think you have to be able to have a board that contains um, some diversity. And then not only that, allow everybody on the board to feel like they have a seat at the table. Because quite frankly, I don't think it's fair at all. And I would not support Councilwoman Lanier for that. And I would ask for your support for uh, nomination, thank you. All right, any other comments? Yes, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to speak on behalf of myself. Um, I have done nothing but work hard for this city. Um, I don't have my hands in a whole lot of things. I make sure that I show up. I have missed one meeting in the four years I've been the chair. I do not do drugs. Um, in the audit committee meeting that Mr. McCoy is referring to, there was a public comment section. No one asked or said anything to do public comments. That meeting in the audit committee was to look at some of the issues with the external auditor in terms of missing deadlines and not complying with the contract. The minutes and the audio are available for the public if they want to look at it. Um, Ever since I have become the city council person for District 3, my name has been disparaged. And I think that comes with the territory. But I would not allow people to uh, disparage my character with lies, simply lies. But I guess that comes with politics. Um, so my position of being in the pool of the chair. I support it, of course, and we can move on. All right, any other questions or comments? Madam Chair. Go ahead. Just thank you. Um, thank you, colleagues, just for the opportunity to be considered <coughs> as the chair. 
I've served previously on this board as the vice chair, and I just wanted to define for the public and for my colleagues again, the role of the chairman. Chairman, chairwoman, or chairperson is responsible for leading meetings of council offices. An organization's councilman broadly has the following responsibility, presiding over meetings of the council, making sure meetings run in an orderly fashion, and fostering consensus amongst our colleagues. It's simply the role of no higher rank than anyone on this die as a board. I don't have a preference to anything that's outstanding of the pleasure of the board, and I would truly lead by example and be fair to every colleague on this board and give an example of not stating that I'm the chair, not stating precedence over anyone on this dais. It's giving everybody an orderly fashion. Giving every elected official on this board the opportunity to serve as the chair is something that I grew up seeing in the city of Riviera Beach. And for me, I was probably the first one to be passed over from vice chair. And in previous meetings, um, Councilwoman Miller Anderson, I believe you said it's fair that everyone have an opportunity to serve as the chair. So what I would ask is for your support to continue to lead by example and to serve as the chair to simply preside over the meetings and not to run the meeting like I'm the leader of this board. It's to just be a board member with the rest of you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other questions or comments? Madam Chair. Go ahead. I cannot support either Mr. McCoy or Mr. Lawson for chair. Personally, I don't think that Mr. McCoy has the temperament. He's shown that on a number of occasions where he has been belligerent toward not only myself, other members of council, even the mayor. And I don't think that he has the emotional wherewithal to be in that role. Mr. Lawson has actively sought to have me recalled on spurious grounds that had no basis in reality. And for that reason and others, I cannot support either of them as chair. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was, somebody taught me something today um, from a mentor that said, don't always look at the messenger, look at the message. And I think uh, for the past two years, we kind of missed the message and got caught up with the messenger. This decision shouldn't be a personal decision. It should be a fair decision. As far as I checked, last time I checked, we're not bipartisan. This is not a group of people with a party that's trying to keep the position. I said last time, <clears throat> these two gentlemen has probably had the most votes than anybody up here. And so the constituents deserve the opportunity to see them in this position. Another thing we're missing, I thought about it today. You have three young men on this board that's innovative, creative, and smart. That a lot of us old people have got in the way. You have Mr. McCoy, you have Mr. Lawson, and you may have Mr. Evans. And I don't think we've been this young in a while. I'm going to politely ask respectfully, that you women allow these young men, give them their due, and let them do what they've been called to do. This can't continue to be personal. It's not personal. Because it's hurting, it's separating our community. Dr. Botel, I mean, I don't think Tr Councilman McCoy has never disrespected me. If he said something <coughs> I didn't agree with, we talked as men and I told him and whatever. Um, but we've all been disrespected on this board. Um, I was disrespected. Uh, and I let it go. And I probably made some decisions that I wasn't always happy with. But one thing I remain to be is I won't be so loud and I'm always going to be fair. So I hope if you plan on moving this city forward, that you ladies do the right thing tonight. If not, it will not only show us, but it showed this community that a lot of the moves you make are personal. So do the right thing. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, I do want to say this. Um, one thing about me, and I think a lot of people know that whatever vote I take, I can live with it, and I will live with it. Um, I don't think 
it is appropriate to say the women against the men. I mean, you can call it like you want to call it, but that, in my mind, that is not how it is. Um, I have heard everyone. I hear everyone. I've heard it over the years. Um, and I can assure you that there has been no conversation about this position prior to this meeting whatsoever because I don't play those type of games. So my vote is a vote that I can live with and that I am fine with on each and every day. Madam Clerk, we have Ms. Lanier, Mr. Lawson, and Mr. McCoy that have been nominated for chair. Um, any other further questions or comments? from anyone up on the board. All right, we're gonna go ahead and look at voting for, they're just gonna say yes or no for Lanier, Lawson, and then McCoy. Yes. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. So do we <coughs> recess and then reconvene to do vice chair? Is that how we should expect that this to happen after why, new selection? Why are you you're saying to do that? What do you mean? So after a new chair is selected, is there going to be a recess to organize and the new chair takes that place? No, because no. we're not going to take over until the 15th. It's not going to apply until the next meeting. Okay. Right. I, I mean, I, would, I don't know how I would know that, but. She but. said it. She already she said, said it. it, and it was in the backup. She said it a few minutes ago, but then it's also in the backup. Okay. All right. Ms. Smith? We're voting on Lanier. Lanier. Councilperson Lawson? No. Councilperson Botel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? No. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson Miller Anderson? No. That vote fails, Madam Chair. All right, now we're going to go with Mr. Lawson as chair? Yes. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Botel? No. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Councilperson Lanier? No. Councilperson Miller Anderson. Yes. That vote passes, Madam Chair, with Councilperson Botel and Lanier dissenting. All right, and we'll still go with McCoy, and then if it's a tie, then we'll break the tie, I guess. Yes. All right, so Mr. McCoy. Councilperson Lawson. Yes. Councilperson Botel. No. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Councilperson Lanier. No. Councilperson Miller Anderson. No. That vote fails, Madam Chair. All right, so we have, who is chair? Mr. Lawson. All right. Madam Chair? Yes. First and foremost, thank you for the support and nomination um, and continue to just move this city and this dais forward and just being a partner to my colleagues and hopefully just continuing to heal. Um, hopefully removing any issues, ill will or vendettas that have been placed and moving the city in the direction that the residents are asking for. So thank you for the opportunity um, and thank you for the support. All right, so we're going to open the floor for nominations for the Chair Pro Tem. Do we have anyone that would like to provide a nomination? Madam Chair? Yes. I'd like to nominate Councilman McCoy for pro tem. Okay, anyone else? Any other nominations? I nominate myself for chair pro tem. All right. McCoy, Lanier, anyone else for chair pro tem? Madam Chair? Yes. I'd like to nominate Mayor Felder. No. All right, anyone else for McCoy or Lanier, other than McCoy and Lanier? Do we have any questions or comments regarding this nomination for McCoy and Lanier? All right, we'll be taking a vote on Mr. McCoy and Ms. Lanier as chair pro tem. Ms. Smith? We don't have any public comment cards on this item, Madam Chair. Okay. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Botel? No. Councilperson McCoy? I'm sorry, are we on Lanier? We're on McCoy. So this is for nominations? For Chair Pro Tem. And who's the candidate, me? Yes. I'm sorry, who are we voting on right now? You. You. Yes. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He said, he said yes. Yeah. Miss Lanier? No. Miss Miller Anderson? No. That vote fails, Madam Chair. All right. So we have Miss Lanier? Yes. All right. And we'll take uh, any other questions or comments? All right. Miss Lanier, can you take a vote for Miss Lanier? Councilperson Lawson? No. Councilperson Botel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? No. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson Miller Anderson? Yes. That vote passes, Madam Chair, with Councilperson Lawson and McCoy dissenting. All right, so we have Ms. Lanier as Chair Pro Tem. Congratulations. Madam Chair, before we um, proceed, as I mentioned before, the new chairperson has to take a new oath. Um, Mr. Lawson, you can elect to do it tonight or you can do it on the 15th and have someone else do it and have your family. It's up to you. We're flexible. It I'll just has to be done before the 15th. Madam Chair? Or on the 15th. Yes. Uh, I'll hold off to the 15th if that's okay, Madam Chair. I, I, it doesn't matter to me. Yes, we'll coordinate with your office. All right. So now 6E for committees. On 6E, let me go ahead and read it in. Hold on. This is your council board appointments to serve from March 2023 to March 2024. You guys should have received a blank sheet. What we will do is go through this list of boards. We will fill in who do you want who do you want to sit on each board as a regular appointment and also as an alternate and at the end we will solidify the appointments with one motion madam chair yes could i make a motion that we leave those appointments the way they've been in the past year do we have a second for that second I don't know that that's proper. I mean, how do you decide for me that I'm going to stay on the board? With? Well, let, okay, so it's a second. We could have a conversation, and if we don't want to keep it as that, then we just vote it down. Okay. So um, do we have any comments for this item? No, Madam Chair, we do not have any comments. Any acceptance of public comment cards are not closed. We are on item 6E, which is which was 2A, which is City Council Board appointments to serve from March 2023 to March 2024. Questions or comments from the board? Dr. Botel's motion is to keep, um, keep them as is. Anyone object to that? So you okay with them, Stan? I mean, what, what, what do I say? I mean, you said there's a motion on the floor. Yeah, I mean, you don't want but to comment on it? What's the vote? I mean, you're going to keep me on a member on a board that I may not. I mean, what is it What is it to object to? I mean, that was my issue. I mean, I thought we'd go through and decide what we're able she to She made do. a motion. If you had a comment about it, you can make the comment. If not, we will go ahead and vote on the item. Okay, I, I, what I'm trying to tell you is I don't want to be on at least okay. one of these committees that I'm on. All right, any other comments? Well, Madam Chair, yes. I'd be happy to amend my motion to allow for, obviously, <laughs> it's not indentured servitude. If you don't want to be on a committee, then you can resign from the committee. It just seems to me we could go, we could waste, we could spend a lot of time this evening looking at things that we've already, I mean, I'm happy to stay on every committee that I'm on, I'm on which is a good number of them. So if somebody wants to, make an exception to that motion based on the fact that they're no longer willing to serve, then I, I would accept that a, a, a addition or modification. All right, so Mr. McCoy, Mr. Lawson, Ms. Lanier. Ma yes. Madam Chair, may I say something? Mm -hmm. We have two public comment cards that were put in, but the numbering on them was wrong. They used the original numbering, I guess, the agenda itself says that it's 2A. But we passed 2A a long time ago. I can't hear you, sweetheart. I said we passed 2A a long time ago, though, still. So where were the cards? Were they up there? Well, because the, because the agenda was reordered and 2A was moved, 
they're asking to speak now. Because of the same reason we just moved the other, that's fine. So it's gonna be Lady Gold March and Cindy March. Lady March Goldwire, you guys are super aggravated with the people in the audience, the few of us who are here um, speaking out against the things that just don't feel right in our spirits. You know, your body language, your disposition is just, is not becoming of anybody who even wants to serve, much less serve in a space, a chair or a pro chair or, I don't know. There's a lot of committee vacancies um, or committee positions that are filled and in looking at them, primarily the ones centered on education. We have some very um, decorated, for lack of a better word, individuals on the dais who have extensive educational backgrounds, doctorate degrees, master level degrees that focus and center themselves on education. The schools that are serviced here in the community are struggling. And I would suggest or at least want to point out that you guys seemingly having the skill sets that you do, you would think that there was a lot more presence there. Dr. or Shirley Lanier, my apologies, held a, a, a pretty good forum on yesterday. Um, uh, and the issues touched on some very important things for us in the community. but. I would argue that those of you who are serving on the education related committees are just not present enough um, for us to have the four schools in our community, specifically elementary schools that are struggling for our numbers to be where they are. I would like to see if you're gonna be on those positions to be in those positions and utilize your talents and your advanced degrees to further the um, achievements of our children's support our teachers, our educators, and those individuals who are looking for a hand up because the resources are minimal here. The students are dealing with some issues centered around marginalization, and I just think it could be better. So if you are going to stay in the roles that you're in, especially being educators, administrators, doctors of education, um, I'd like to see you guys perform um, in a more advanced role, advanced way in those positions, specific to the positions related to education. Thank you. Next is Miss Cindy March. Hi, Cindy March. Good evening. I'm going to reiterate myself. If Dr. Botel is on one of them boards, whatever board it may be, it could be the cat running after the rat. She needs to recuse herself. She has displayed nothing, and I reiterate over and over again, but racism. She has this city so divided. And the last time I checked, Singer Island and the city of Revere Beach on the west side is one city. We don't even have a playground for our kids. And if you're on the board, and if anybody on the board talking about the Summer Youth Employment Program, look what you all did to Lynn Hubbard, and she was for our kids. So I don't feel like if Botel is on the board, she need to be on any board. She shouldn't even be sitting up on this dais right now. Point blank, simple as that. We have to call you out for what we see. Yes, I get up here and I talk like I'm angry. Well, I am angry because you know why? We worked so hard to put you all in office and you all don't represent us as a whole. No, we can't get everything we want, but let's stop being divided. If you say you're going to move this city forward, the city you love to live, work, and play, it's going to start from our youth. And you have displayed a character that is despicable. You need to be disposed. And we're going to do everything we can in our power to make sure that you don't sit on the board. See, titles don't mean anything to me. It's not showing up for the job, but are you doing the job? That's the real hypothetical question. Your heart is not right. Your heart is not right because you displayed too many things in your hands in everybody's business and personal business. You can keep that smirk on your face. It's good to smile, but let your heart be your heart, okay? Don't be colorized with racism because you have displayed that over and over again. I don't care about you being a doctor. You can get a person off the street, clean them up, bathe them, put them on a nice brown suit with some brown busted shoes. He's going to respect and he's going to treat everybody the same because he appreciates where he come from. 
Thank you. Uh, so Madam Chair, Chair, that's it. Okay. So the motion is on the floor to accept this as is. Mr. McCoy does not want to do that. Anyone else have any questions or comments? I, I do want to possibly change some of these, um, not the education one. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm not, I, I would like to stay there if that's okay with everyone. Um, so if we can vote on this, you want to keep your vote there. I'm sorry, your motion, Ms. Um, Dr. Botel, and then we just vote it down, or do you want to pull back it so we can go? Over but, Madam Chair, yes, I'm wondering if to expedite this, the best way to proceed would be to say individually, yes, I'm happy to stay on the ones that I'm on, or, as is the case of Mr. McCoy, it seems, no, I don't want to continue in that role. I mean, rather than having to go through each I mean, one. I think we can go fairly quick. I mean, we spent uh, quite a bit of time just talking about Madam how Chair, we're going to do it. Yes. If you allow, on your sheets that you have here, they're blank. So we can go through them really fast. I'll tell you who's there. It's on the backup. I have it's it right in front of me. No, what I'm saying is you have a blank one as well that was given to you where you all can write in as we go. Right. Okay. I understand. But I have the backup of who's currently on it. Yeah. And then if and if people want to change, then they can change. If not, we just say you want to keep it the same. Fine. I'll withdraw my motion. Let's just get on okay. with it. Thank you. All right. So let's take a look at the Business Development Board. We have Mr. McCoy as regular, Lawson as alternate. You want to remain? Anyone new want to take over that position? I'll remain in my position, Madam Chair. All right. Any, anyone else want the regular? Mr. McCoy, do you want to stay there or no? No, ma'am. Respectfully. Say that again? No, I can't. You don't want to be on that? No, no, ma'am. Okay. So, Mr. Lawson, do you want ma'am. regular? Ma'am Chair, I'll move to regular. Okay. Anybody else? I'll take the alternate. All right. Okay. Issues forum. I'll stay on it. All right. Botel is regular. Mr. McCoy, alternate. Everyone okay with that? Yes. Ms. Lanier and Mr. Lawson? Yes. Yes. All right. North County Intergovernmental Committee? I'll stay on it. Anyone else? McCoy? That's, that's fine, Madam Chair. Anybody else? <laughs> um, Palm Beach County League of Cities General Members? I'll stay on it. Anyone else? All right, I'll stay as the alternate. Um, Palm Beach County School District, I'm as the regular. I'll stay um, as alternate. And Botel is the alternate. Yeah. And as we know, their meetings are generally the same time our meetings are. Um, so that is usually a conflict for most of us because their meetings are usually the same time as ours and the same day. Anyone else, regular or alternate? All right, so I'll stay as the regular and Botel will stay as the alternate. Um, North Chamber of Commerce. I'll Botel stay on. Botel is regular, Lawson is alternate. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am, Jay, I'll stay. Okay, anyone else want that, either one of those positions? All right. Um, no, Palm Beach North Chamber Economic Development Committee. Botel is yes, regular. I'll McCoy stay. is alternate. Anybody else? McCoy? Yeah, I'm asking that I that we find someone else for the Economic Development Committee. Have some? You don't want the alternate anymore? No, because I have a conflict with another committee that I serve on at the same time. Okay. Anyone else want to be the alternate for the Economic Development Committee? All right, so we're going to just leave that open for now. And if someone else wants it later on, then we can revisit that. Um, North Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee. I'll stay on it. Regular. I'm the alternate. Anyone else? Okay. Botel, regular. I'll stay as the alternate. Um, TPA. We have Lanier as regular, McCoy as alternate. I'll keep that. You want to stay as the regular? Yes. 
and alternate McCoy? Yes. Okay. Um, Port of Palm Beach, regular, Lawson, Lanier, alternate? I'll stay, Madam Chair. That's fine. All right, anyone else? All right. And the Riviera Beach Education Advisory Committee. I was at the regular and Botel was alternate. I'll stay. All right. Ms. Lanier, did you want the regular? Say it again. Did you want the regular Education Advisory Committee? Yeah, I'll take that. All right. So Lanier will take regular and alternate will be Botel. All right. So do you have that, Ms. Um, Smith? Yes. Do so you want me to read it over or are you good with what it written down? Everyone has there? We have it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's it for that item. Madam Chair, may we have a, mo a motion to approve the appointments? Yes. Motion to approve the appointments. Second. All right, Madam Clerk. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Botel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Council Chairwoman Lanier? Yes. Chair Pro Tim Lanier, I'm sorry. Yes. Chairperson Miller Anderson? Yes. That vote passes, Madam Chair. All right, 11B. 11B, resolution number 3923, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida, approving Director of Finance and Administrative Services to A, transfer funds from information technology surplus revenue to project 22014, and B, as in boy, approved payment for outstanding invoices for the milestone payment for fiscal years 2021 and 2022 in the amount of $123,840 and C, approved payment for annual maintenance slash support for fiscal years 2021 and 2022 in the amount of $323,396.44, all totaling $447,236.44 and providing an effective date. Madam Chair, this item is presented by Ch Josh Lewis, Interim Chief of Police, and we have no public comment cards on this item. The acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. Move to deny. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? All right, dies for a lack of a second. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. We have a second. Second. All right, Mr. Evans. Madam Chair, members of the board, if I can have the interim police chief, Mr. Joshua Lewis, and assistant chief Mike Madden to make this presentation. All right. Good evening. Good evening, council, mayor, city attorney, city manager. Uh, assistant chief Madden will present this item. Good evening, mayor and council. Mike Good Madden, evening. assistant police chief. Uh, we brought this item into the last meeting. It was brought back due to a correction that needed to be made to the resolution. Those changes were made. Again, it's a transfer of funds from the information technology surplus revenue account to address uh, milestone payments and maintenance payments from the police department's computer aided dispatch and records management system that was implemented uh, several years ago. Uh, the company through, they changed the name of their company several times in the process. Uh, they had a billing error and they failed to bill the city uh, for the milestone payments and two years maintenance. Uh, when they caught those mistakes, they brought it to our attention. Uh, staff negotiated. There is a settlement agreement attached to this item. Uh, they have they they've realized that they the city's budget process budgets close year to year, and that the city doesn't keep those funds sitting there. Uh, so they have uh, waived billing us for those payments, and we are starting to bill moving forward correctly. So in the end, you know, through their mistake, the city saves uh, nearly four hundred thousand dollars of expenses that they would have had to pay. I'll take any questions you may have. All right, Madam Chair. Yes. How much did the city save uh, by virtue of the company saying it was our fault and we shouldn't have done it that way? 
$390,561. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? All right, Madam Clerk. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Botel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? No. Chair Pro Tem Lanier? Yes. Chairperson Miller Anderson? Yes. That vote passes, Madam Chair, with Councilperson McCoy dissenting. All right, 11D is in dog. Mm -hmm. Resolution number 47-23, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida, authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to execute the amendment and ex extension of the lease agreement between the Alpha Educational Foundation, DDL, Incorporated, and the City of Riviera Beach for the purpose of extending the term of the lease for the Judge Edward Rogers Community Empowerment Village for a term of six months for use of city-owned property located at 251 West 11th Street, providing an effective date and for other purposes. Madam Chair, we do not have any public comment cards on this item. The acceptance of public comment cards are now closed and this item will be presented, presented by Ms. McBride, Deputy City Manager. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. You said no public comment cards? No, ma'am, no public okay. comment cards. All right, Mr. Evans. Madam Chair and members of the board, if I can have the Deputy City Manager, Ms. Elizabeth, Ms. McBride, to make this presentation. All right, Ms. McBride. Yes. Mayor, uh, Madam Chair, and Madam Chair Pro Tem, and members of the City Council, this item uh, in 2018, March of 2018, the City Council provided the Alpha Educational Foundation, Inc., with a five-year lease for the judge to create the Judge Rogers Educational Village at 251 West 11th Street. That basically was the, I think, the Maritime Academy property. Um, and they have occupied that the land since then. Their lease expires on March 20th of this month. And we have uh, provided to before you tonight just an extension of the term of the lease for six months, which would run into September 20th of this year. It also, in the resolution, would grant the city manager one other option to extend it another six months, should it be needed. During this time period, the city and the CRA will be looking at the property together to consider undertaking the redevelopment of the property. All right, any comments or questions from the board? Yes, um, I had a question. Um, I had the same question in the, um, <coughs> and the agenda review, and it was about the six months and then the manager having the authority to um, extend it for additional time. When I asked about what was going to happen at the end of the six months, there were, could you tell me, Mr. Evans, again, about what was supposed to, what is supposed to happen at the end of these six months? Madam Chair. Go ahead. Uh, the intent behind the six month extension period is to allow for us to have a discussion with the board about the potential of activating the site to do some infill development on the particular site that is currently being utilized. Uh, so that will allow for us to work out some of the uh, challenges associated with uh, deed restriction that's on the property and then provide some schematic designs and concepts for the board to consider. Uh, so the intent behind the six month extension is to allow for us to work through those um, and then ultimately um, come to the board for direction as to how you would like to proceed. And I think my question was that if it was going to be six months and then if that did not happen in six months and it had to be renewed um, and the lease would be ending, why not just do it for 12 months and then it ends on its own? Meaning that instead of going, because I, I don't want to have a situation where it is six months and then six months and then six months. So I would suggest that we do it for a year and then after the end of that year, the... Um, uh, the uh, uh, agreement is done. Uh, it's over. It's finished. Uh, instead of doing these six months, six months, six months, because if we're going to do that, use that property to 
um, put housing on or whatever the board decides, I want to be able to make that decision when it does come to the council instead of waiting uh, for another six months or another six months. Um, if we have a year, then that's when it's supposed to come back to us or, in, or, or sooner. But it does give the city the time to work with the nonprofits who are there um, to be able to uh, use that property. All right. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, Mr. Evans, do we have a timeline on when uh, information will be presented to the board for schematics, design, next steps for what the plan is for that property? Uh, Madam Chair? Go ahead. Um, I would anticipate probably in the next um, 60 days, we would have things to a good point um, to bring to the board for your consideration with regards to the concept. But obviously there is a lot of legal paperwork that and, and process that has to occur on the school district side as well. And then obviously going through the development review process, site plan, et cetera, um, that's going to be a, a long process as well as funding uh, the project as well. So in, in most cases to where it's a situation where you're seeing the site plan and moving forward with the development, you're probably looking at a year in totality. And the dialogue and plan and direction with the, the organizations that are at the facility currently, do we have a plan in place for them, the next steps? These are majority nonprofit organizations that are there. So while we're going through the dialogue of development and growth with, the, with that parcel, What's going to be our plan for the actual alphas and the other nonprofits there? Madam Chair, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, it would be staff's recommendation that if you are to activate the site, that it would be a phase construction, uh, that you would start on the parts of the parcel that are not being currently occupied. In the preliminary schematic design, uh, there is a concept that calls for a commercial space whereby that can be utilized for the purposes of providing for a civic or a community space that can provide for social services where that particular uh, facility would be located would be adjacent to in front uh, 13th and that conceivably could be constructed first and then allow for entities to move into that space if that's a desire of the board and then the activation of the back half so our intent is to do a, a phase construction plan to allow for the operations of those um, non-for-profit spaces uh, as long as they can uh, still utilize that space before we were to take on the responsibility of redeveloping the site. Follow up, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Um, I guess just following up to that point, and I'd be concerned with uh, some of the liability and logistics of having uh, phase construction with having the kids and the nonprofit organizations on the parcel while we're actually working on developing it. But I guess that'll be a process that we vet out and continue to build. I just wanna make sure we have a timeline and clear communication with the organizations so that they're not in limbo, so that they can understand, okay, they either have six months, nine months, 12 months, whatever the timeline is, we're keeping them abreast to what's happening. Because even with the phase construction, that that is not gonna be able to, to provide housing for all of the organizations while we're developing parcels of it. So. I think we just got to bet out the program and make sure that we're just clear with the dialogue and discussion with them. And um, that'll be slated to Mr. Evans, but I would be in support of doing the six month with the six month extension. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, any other questions or comments for this item? All right, Madam Clerk. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Botel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Lanier? Yes. Chairperson Millen Anderson? Yes. That that motion passes, Madam Chair. I didn't hear you. What did you put? Next, we're on 11E. Go ahead. Madam Chair, this item before Wait, you. She, she has to read it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Resolution number 4423, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida, contracting with Matthew Russell, Esquire, for parliamentary services during the City of Riviera Beach City Council meetings and such other professional services as outlined in the professional service agreement, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute the professional service agreement for an amount not to exceed the city manager's authority providing for severability and providing an effective date. Madam Chair, we have one public comment card on this 
two public comment cards on this item and the acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. Motion to approve resolution number 44-23. Second. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Evans. Madam Chair and members of the board, this item is seeking authorization from the board to proceed forward with parliamentary service to assist in facilitating city council meetings. Uh, the contract calls for a joint execution of tasks and responsibilities by the office of the city attorney and the city manager. Uh, this particular individual would be placed on the dais and provide for expertise as it relates to parliamentary procedures. Uh, parliamentarian is called for as it relates to in your, your charter, as it relates to the duties and responsibilities. Also, it is a requirement for you to follow that consistent with your charter. Uh, so staff is recommending that the board uh, adopt this resolution. This would be till the remainder of the fiscal year. Uh, this will give us an opportunity to see if the process works to also get some training uh, on the job. And I think it would allow for uh, more productive meetings and quicker meetings as we will be following Robert's Rules of Order uh, to the T. Also, with some of the major projects and initiatives that the board has coming on the horizon, staff thought that this was appropriate to move forward with this particular initiative as it will help to unpack a lot of the complicated items that um, will be coming forward. Also, this particular individual would also look at the rules of decorum, our civility, um, uh, policies and procedures to ensure that the meetings are, are run uh, smooth and, and consistent with the policies that are adopted. And so staff is prepared to answer any questions and recommends approval of resolution 4423. All right. Um, let's go to public comment. Yes, Madam Chair. First, we have Ms. Tanya Davis Johnson, followed by Ms. Mary Bram. And that's the end of public comments, Madam Chair. Okay. Good evening, Madam Chair, Good Mr. Evening. Mayor, Chair Pro Tem, members of the council. Um, I urge you to vote no. I see this as a waste of taxpayer dollars because you cannot, con you cannot contract decorum, decency, respect. These are things that you should come to the council as a member of presenting and showing your public to, to secure the services of an attorney to sit on that dais and to help you all govern yourselves is insane to me. I am sorry, Mr. City Manager. I just believe that this is a total waste and an and unnecessary cost because if you all can't govern yourselves, why do we believe that someone's going to come in at $235 an hour and govern you and, and show you how you should behave and, and present yourselves as elected officials. I urge you to vote no. This is just not a good use of spend, a, a good spend of our dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Ms. Mary Bram. Ms. Mayor, Ms. Mayor, Bram Revere Beach. Good evening. I, this, if you all do this, this would be the first time in the city history of Revere Beach that we had to have this type of mannerism so that you all can be conducted. We elected you all to do exactly what this city here calls for in our charters. I'm not saying, I know Mr. Attorney Matthew Russell, he was one of my instructors, and I know he's very stern and he's very strict. But with you all as grown men and women, <coughs> you, you all are grown men and women, you all are not children. And as an elected body and how you conduct your meeting, that's why you were elected with your robber's rules and orders. If you all will read those in depth and apply that knowledge along with that skill set that that, that decorum would bring, you all can sit here and conduct business. I have nothing, I have nothing against if this 
what the city manager and you all are opting to do, this, this to me is a waste. And you all are not children. You all are not in no sandboxes. It's time to get over all of this stuff here and conduct ourselves as men and women. Do you know how bad this city looks? If, if this go forward like this, I know it gets frustrating sometimes, but we have to be mindful to control ourselves. This is what our grown men and women do. They control themselves. You all sit here and you all supposed to dialogue and operate in the aspect of you know exactly what you're doing. And I know sometimes it gets heated in here, but with the parliamentary and that $235 an hour, but it's based on as needed, as needed. We need you here when you are supposed to be here to do exactly what you all were collected to do. Normally the chair is the parliamentarian along with the clerk and along with your attorney. Now, if you all feel as if that this is necessary, we don't see that this is being necessary. Because if you all cannot do your job effective, then you all must abandon those seats there. You should be able to govern in an effective manner, whether or not you get heated or not. Come back and say you're sorry, like Ms. Bram always do. If I'm wrong, Ms. Bram says, tell me if I'm wrong. We can be agreeable as well as disagreeable. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, that concludes public comments. All right. Questions or comments from the board? Yes, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Mr. Evans, can you restate what you said? Because I believe I heard you say that the parliamentarian is called out in our charter. Is that what I heard you say? The, the roles and responsibilities, who serves as the parliamentarian is called out, I believe. Bring it out. The responsibility resides with the city clerk. And I can tell you that um, one of the things, and we've had internal conversations uh, with regards. But Mr. To Evans, I'm asking specifically this authority, and I, I, you know that's kind of where. I'm not asking for foundational, but I'm trying to understand the authority because you said it, then a speaker got up and said it. It's not in the charter that I read. In fact, the charter calls out that we should keep our books and records uh, relating to parliamentary um, proceedings as laid down in Robert's Rules of Order, but it doesn't call out a parliamentarian per se. And unless you're looking at something different, I don't know what, what we're talking about. That's the first thing. And I'm looking at section 12 of the charter. Second thing is, Ms. Wynn, if I can have your attention on this, and, and I think we should also note something, everything about this professional services agreement can already be done by the manager. So it, it's almost like we're given this task to now approve a contract when in fact, this is already within the manager's authority. I don't know that I agree with what's being asked here because the parliamentarian, as I, I share with uh, both Ms. Wynn and Ms. Mr. Evans is the parliamentary parliamentarian really has no effect on this body. They can't make any kind of recommendations. They are not sanctioned under our current Robert's Rules of Order. There's nothing about a parliamentarian, especially one that's not the chairperson, that actually can be enforceable. So members, we need to think about if we're even trying to do this, because aside from the cost, there's really no enforcement that this parliamentarian can have. I mean, somebody to sit over there, and I, I heard the suggestion of 235 or something like that. I thought the contract called out $600 per meeting and then $235 for other legal work. Is that correct? Madam Chair? Uh, that is correct. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I'm not going to support the item, but Mr. Evans, um, I only thing I've seen in reference to parliamentary in the charter was section 12 of the charter. And, you know, it only speaks to that. The rules are laid out in Robert's Rules of Order as it relates to parliamentary. And outside of that, there is no position that's called out in our charter or our code of ordinances. So I won't support this. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. if I may. Who was that? Yep. 
Mr. Evans, was it you? Yes, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Uh, with respect to the, the role or the, the function of the parliamentarian, your, your charter does specify that you are to follow it. It, it, it is the rules uh, as it relates to how you are to conduct your meetings. There is no, it, and so the parliamentarian, and, and I do want to address the point, is that pursuant to the authority that the manager has, yes, I have the ability to enter into a contract. However, I don't want to bring something that's going to be working in tandem with the board that's not supported by the board. And so the intent behind the parliamentarian is to assist with conversations and discussions. And when there is questions with regards to parliamentary procedures, that they advise and help and support the board and the chair. And so that is the intent behind the action. I didn't want to bring something and then tell the board that, you know, we're, we're doing it just because the manager has the authority. I wanted the board support to facilitate in doing such. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Mr. Evans, would you be bringing a similar item to the board for the CRA meetings as well? Um, Madam Chair. Go ahead. If it is something that is uh, desirable from the board, our intent is to bring it to the CRA as well. Follow up, Madam Chair. Go ahead. And the, CR and the uh, UD meetings as well? No, Madam Chair. Okay, so I would be in agreement because the only thing outlined in our charter in reference to the parliamentary is section 12, as my colleague referenced, that meetings shall be conducted in accordance with parliamentary proceedings as laid down in Robert's Rules of Order. So I think, think the additional spending could be better allocated in other areas, uh, possibly support for our development services with permitting, possibly some other consulting uh, arenas to help with the process of assisting the residents. To assist this diaz um, as uh, the newly elected chair, I will take precedence in making sure I'm prepared for the meetings, making sure I'm duly and understand the process of Robert's Rules of Order, and make sure that I'm handling the process of being the parliamentary and assistance with our clerk and our city attorney. So I couldn't support this item, and I understand bringing in somebody for a short period of time to the end of this budget cycle is to kind of give some oversight to this board, but with a possible new board, a new chair coming in next year, and possibly needing this additional training again, I would take it on the responsibility of the sitting chair and our city attorney and our clerk to make sure that they're handling and making sure this board is following Robert's rules of order. So I couldn't support this, Mr. Evans, um, for this item. I don't think that we need to spend this additional dollars in this arena. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, anyone else? Madam Chair. Go ahead. Thank you. Councilman Lawson, great point. But again, aside from whether or not you were supported from the financial reasons, if he came up and did it for free, what I'm saying to you members is he has no authority for enforcement. Whatever he says is not called out in our charter. He doesn't have a charter position. Therefore, he has no bearing or whatever he provides to us has no effect on the board. It's only as an advisory in nature. And no different than what we can already rely on our clerk and our attorney for. I'm, well, I'm sorry. I, you know, I don't see where it's called out in our uh, anywhere that it's the responsibility of either. Madam Chair, if I may. Are you finished, Mr. McCoy? That's it. Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. Uh, Robert's rules of order is the rules. So if the parliamentary was to provide you with advice or guidance, it's consistent with the rules that you are required to follow pursuant to the charter. Um, but that that the uh, the chair runs the meeting but they would be providing that advice, but you are required to follow Robert's rules of order. Anyone else? Anyone else? Madam Chair? Yes. I guess my colleague's point is that, um, and just trying to understand for myself, is that as a consultant coming to the board, that all consultants are giving a recommendation to the board. The consultant that we would hire that you're bringing on for outlining Robert's <laughs> rules of orders would then have to be followed by what is stated and dictated by the consultant you bring to the table. I would not support it because no matter what consultant comes to this board, the board makes the final decision. So I don't think we need to spend these additional dollars to have someone come tell us what rules we need to follow because we are all adults here. We understand how to follow the rules and we understand what the rules say and outline in regards to Robert's rules if we take the time to make sure we read them. So I'm not sure why we're going to even waste these dollars on a parliamentary as long as we govern ourselves accordingly. All right, anyone Thank else? You, Madam, Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. 
Um, I'm, I'm not going to support this uh, motion because I don't think the issue is whether or not we follow Robert's rules. I think the issue, as one of the speakers referenced, is some of the behaviors that are exhibited. And I don't think a parliamentarian is going to fix those, so I'm not going to support it. All right. Anyone else? All right, Madam Clerk. Councilperson uh, Lawson. Madam, Clerk, Hold on. Madam Chair. Yes. I move that we delete this from the agenda because it's not even germane to us. Not only that, this is something that is not even in our purview. If the manager had the authority to do this administratively, we just need not to take action on it. There's no need for us to vote on it. So I will move that we just remove this item from the agenda. Second. Well, maybe. I mean, is that not a recognized motion? <clears throat> it is. I mean, because if we don't, I mean, what are we doing? Is, is that not recognized? There's a motion on the floor. There's a motion there, on the floor. Right. There's a motion what on the floor. What is your point, Mr. McClure? That's your point. I'm sorry, who am I talking to? Is it you? That's me. Okay, so I offered a motion to delete. And the motion to amend and the motion to delete are synonymous and they run the same. And those motions to amend, supersedes any motion that's on the floor. For but the here's the thing, Mr. McCoy. Did anyone disagree with what you just did? No. Right, but I'm sitting here wondering why there's such a pause. Do we not understand what, what I'm asking? Matt? Yes. You want me to call the question? Go ahead. So we're voting to delete the item completely? Yeah. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Botel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Councilperson, I mean, Chair Pro Tim Lanier. Yes. Chairperson Miller Anderson. No. That vote fails, passes, Madam Chair, with Chairperson Miller Anderson dissenting. All right, we're going to go to public comment. Public comments shall begin at 7 30 p.m. unless there is no further business of the City Council, which in that event, it shall begin sooner. In addition, if an item is being considered at 7.30 p.m., then comments from the public shall begin immediately after the item has been concluded. Please be reminded the City Council Board has adopted the rules of the form governing public conduct during official meetings, which has been posted at the front desk in an effort to preserve order. If any of the rules are not adhered to, the City Council Chairperson may have any disruptive speaker or attendee removed from the podium from the meeting and or the building if necessary. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Madam Chair, the acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. You have a total of 12 cards. Okay. We're gonna start with Ms. Anna Vergney, followed by Vilecki Brown, V as in Victor, E-L-E-K-E. -E. Third will be Ms. Cindy March. I'm Anna Bergney and I live at Good evening. Lakeview Park. Um, I have multiple concerns today, but I want to start off with thanking a few people that have been very supportive to me. Um, Mayor Felder, thank you. Mr. McCoy, thank you. Mr. Lawson, thank you for, Councilman Lawson, thank you for always listening. Mrs. Miller, thank you for the meeting. I wanted to also thank the police department. Um, I was engaged by them today. I don't know if they engage is the word. Um, but we had a great meeting. Some of the things that we talked about was how to clean up our city, how to stop the dumping, and the police department is on it. Um, they've engaged the warriors. They've joined our page. And hopefully, we can work together to make our city better. I know that cameras are currently going up across across some of the city um, for illegal dumping, which I think is pretty impressive. Um, and I think one of the police officers will be joining the, the task force at the city of West Palm Beach. Um, I wanted to go back to the mooring field issue and the contract um, that we have with the mooring field. The consultants in regard to the mooring field did not provide the public the accurate information. And I'm concerned that that information is not going to be given to the board accurately and to the mayor to keep to have an ability to veto or for the council to make a decision. So I encourage each and every one of you 
to please listen to the town hall that happened the other day, because it was ludicrous, and we're paying over $200,000 for these people. I come again to implore you, visit my home. Lakeview Park is falling apart. We can't breathe the air, and we can't walk our streets. The fumes are intoxicating, and the, even the city staff is complaining about it. I mean, that's not fair to the residents, and it's not fair to the city staff either. We're pushing forward on a development that their issues exist in regards to one of the questions that I asked the mayor yesterday was, I thought public safety came first, right, before development. Because I'm really confused why this project is moving forward so quickly when our lives are at stake. Our safety is being, it, we're not safe. I don't know how much I have to beat my head against the wall to be heard. Thank you. Next, Madam Chair, is Vilecki Brown, followed by Cindy March, and then Lady March. Hello to the council, <clears throat> the mayor, city manager, administration, and community. My name is Valika Brown, CEO of e Map Corporation, and I'm pleased to represent No Food Operation, No Food Gap, and the Riviera Beach Urban Farm and Garden. e Map entered into a partnership with the city in the midst of COVID to provide a solution to, food, to the food insecurity crisis. We went to work, I'm proud to say, because of an extremely dedicated volunteer force, amazing partners, I left my glasses, and super supportive residents, we have turned two derelict lots into beautiful recreational spaces. E-Roadmap has worked tirelessly for two years building relationships with residents, corporations, government officials to help bring awareness to the great work happening in Revere Beach E-Roadmap has hosted workshops and successfully grown and distributed over 12,000 pounds of non-GMO organic produce to Revere Beach residents. This year, there were two tropical storms at the beginning of the planning cycle, yet with a resilient energy, the team continued to show up, plant, weed, socialize, and believe. Right now at the farm, there are between three and 4,000 pounds of produce ready to be harvested and delivered to residents. Unfortunately, there have been some administrative challenges resulting in a lapse in contract renewal, preventing us from getting that much needed food out to residents. We hope this challenge will be resolved soon so we can continue to get back to the mission of changing the narrative of Revere Beach from a food desert to a food forest and improving negative health disparities in marginalized communities like Riviera Beach. In closing, we love this work. I personally miss the work. The volunteers love the project. The residents are the benefactors. Our top volunteer, Aman, showing you some of the produce that's there, waiting for the residents. We have planted. Carrots, butternut squash, Swiss chard, spinach, broccoli, beets, cauliflower, cabbage, eggplant, avocados, bananas, cherries, lemons, grapefruit, strawberries, sour sop, papayas, herbs, peppers, onions, romaine, and spring mix. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Madam Chair, is Cindy. Yes, this going home with me. <laughs> I Next is Cindy March, Lady Goldwire, and Dolores Williams. Hi, Cindy March. Let me give you a few synonyms for decorum. It's civilized, it's decency, it's orderliness, it's politeness, it's your demeanor and your correctness. Why would you all pay somebody to tell you all how to act, but then you all want to tell us how to act? But at first, sometimes start from the dais because you all are leaders. You feel like 
you all have the authority to say what you want to say to us, and we're not supposed to show disrespect to you like you show it to us. And then, Evans, I saw you. I'm a great observer. I saw you when I got out of line. You call that police officer behind you to you. It's fine because I will always respect officer of the law because I want to go home like they want to go home. Okay? So you all first, you need to teach them. Instead of trying to pay somebody tight spares dollars, you need to teach them that it starts at home. And this is our home. So we go to them into office. We're not here to disrespect you all. We want to see the city move forward. But we're not going to just let y'all just bamboozle us and say and do anything which y'all say do because y'all got a, a, a thing, a gavel that you all can beat. And then you tell them, sit down. Okay, your time is up. But you all can go all day long, argue with one another. You all don't think the public is watching this? Like I say, respect is due, respect is given, but it has to be earned first. And Kashama, you one of the ones, Lanier, I don't know how they appointed you to be the chair again, co-chair, because you don't have decorum either. And Mr. Evans, you change the narrative and anything you want to do to fit you. And that's not right with the taxpayers' money. I still would like to know when we're gonna rebuild wealth reparation for our youth. We're losing our kids into the streets every day because of drugs, because of gang banging. They can't even come and play on the playground. They can't have a family picnic. Can you please tell us when this temporary fire station is gonna be done with for our kids can have another place called Wells Recreation. We don't have many places for our kids to go. I said long time ago, we don't even have our own movie theater. What are we doing with our taxpayers' dollars? And you worrying about bringing a man in here to teach these grown folks how to behave? I know when I didn't know how to behave as a grown person, my mama beat me. She didn't hire nobody to tell me how to act. They shouldn't have took the job if they wasn't skin red and tough. They shouldn't have took the job. We're not going to walk the beat to tell you to vote for this person and that person, and they want to talk to us any kind of way like we Anna Gump's sister and Willie Mae auntie. We're not going to tolerate it. We got enough real issues here in the city of Revere Beach. We got people sleeping on the benches because they're homeless. We got people can't even eat, and you want to pay somebody some money to come in here and tell grown folks how to act? Please give me a break. Thank you. Next is Lady Goldwire, followed by Dolores Williams and Tanya Davis Johnson. Lady March Goldwire, I just want to read a couple of things into the record that I received and stumbled across going through some of the public records requests that um, I got. It starts, I've been warning everyone to be careful not to say anything publicly because it would impact this case as it is not over. Nevertheless, some council members believe that they do not have to heed to the advice of attorneys, even when they are advised that their conduct will hurt the agency and the very people they represent and serve. Florida Statute Section 112.311 deals with conflicts of interest, and I'm asking that you advise them concerning this statute and anything else that you believe that they should be advised about, that they remain clear. It seems clear at least that Dr. Botel has a conflict of interest. She was not just involved in this litigation, but it was her alleged conduct that put the city of Riviera Beach at the most risk for the plaintiff's Florida whistleblower claim. That claim not only put the city at risk, but it is not subject to the Florida statutory cap, but was also very difficult to prevail on. In fact, it guided my strategy at trial more than any other claim. Therefore, she must be very careful not to make any public or private comments about this litigation, both now or in the future. Otherwise, both her personally and the city of Riviera Beach corporately may be at substantial risk. In a subsequent memo that Botel wrote and read into the record, the last paragraph of it said, and it was attention to Don Wynn, city attorney. The, city to, the decision to appeal was a clear directive from the city council. Failure to carry out this directive contained a, continues to be a violation of your contract. Refusal to act as you have been directed by council is not only in the best interest of the city or its residents. Please file the stay today yourself. And if you need help, I will ask my daughter to send you a sample motion for this state. This is not complicated and it is what the council directed. 
I am asking based on what I have in my possession that somebody, one of the men on the floor, ask Dr. Tipotel to recuse herself from voting on anything further related to my case, because it could have been over a long time ago. If she was not voting, this wouldn't be an issue. You were a material witness in my case. You were accused as being one of the bad actors in my case. In addition to that, you were impeached at the trial. And on top of all of that, no criminal defendant could have a say in court and then a get in the jury box and decide its fate. And that's effectively what's been happening. Y'all have walked the dogs with me, walked the dogs with me. And I'm so glad to be on the prevailing side because I'm gonna do exactly what I was born to do. And that is fight that. You need to recruit yourself and y'all need to ask her to. Thank you. Next is Ms. Dolores Williams, Ms. Tanya Davis Johnson and Ms. Doretta Paul. Good evening. Good evening. To the mayor and the council, city manager. <clears throat> I just want to say a couple of things. I hope I get everything I got on here. You, uh, the clerk was, she uh, retired, and you got her as an interim. Why didn't she just move right to be our clerk? She's doing a great job. All right? Okay. I saw y'all voted for the council and thing. You, you, and you, y'all have a problem with Mr. McCoy. That man know these rules, laws, and everything here. Y'all don't want to be there to help us get this city straight. And last week, you're talking about bring a man in here to monitor people. They should have been here to monitor you three last week when you were so adamant to make sure that lady go back to court and not win her case. The judge don't rule against you. And Mr. Evans, you could settle this whole thing. You could tell them to pay up and get through with it. And I looked at y'all up there when she was up here talking. Oh, look at Miss Anderson. She got to work her out. She got to look all down. You got to look all down. You got to look a little like it. Y'all turned three shades color different last week when y'all say no. Don't, okay, your day gonna come. Remember that. What you sow, you will reap. And you got to stop doing that. And you say Judge Rogers over there. How many years that place been looking like that if y'all didn't at least there? That was our, when our first judges said, y'all, something his name on the look like that over there. That's a shame talking about six months, one year, when you're going to do something. It should have been something a long time ago, been done there to the, over there to the, to the uh, used to call it the die thing. Y'all need to stop doing what y'all doing here. You, you, and you need to be off the board. You getting on all these, oh, the head, then I'm going to be the interim, and I'm going to be, why are you getting on so many boards? How are you going to help with the city? Getting all these boards. Oh, I'm going to stay. Your attitude and the tone y'all have against Mr. McCoy, that's bad what y'all saying. We, I need to get a collage up and show y'all y'all reaction. How when certain people come at you, T, 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 T. That's bad what y'all doing. It's terrible what y'all doing. Mr. Lee, I think I heard you come and say, people are talking about you. A lot of people come and say things about all y'all to me. I think I told you once before. I didn't know anything about any of y'all. But sometimes now y'all action, how you doing? It's making me change my mind. And you stop. Think. You just hate that man. Why? Because he catch all and everything. Y'all don't know what to do to pass in here. Stop it. Get off all on board. You one, two, three need to be off this board because you're not doing nothing here but causing a combat. How are you going to fight another lady because she needs, because something happened? When are you going to get forgiveness in your heart? She don't have it. Thank you. Ms. Tanya Davis Johnson, Ms. Doretta Park, Mr. Doretta Polk, and Ms. Marvelous Washington. Good evening, Mayor, Madam Chair, Pro Good Chair, evening. Chair Pro Tem, and members of council. I'm returning yet again to um, speak about the unofficial truck stop along Garden Road. I did speak briefly with um, the interim police chief, and he's bringing me up to date. But there are still some things that I am noticing. We are now receiving guests at the truck stop, so you have vehicles that are parking and folks are visiting with the truckers as they are um, parked. And um, they are now changing tires, leaving debris, and just treating it as if it is not in a community. I encourage my District 3 representative to 
um, look more into this because now the parking has extended along Blue Heron Boulevard. That is totally unacceptable and we should not allow these truckers to park their trucks overnight, several days, that has to be addressed. I'm returning again to ask you, the city, to remove your public hearing signs that are at MLK and Avenue I, which has been there since, well, prior to July 6th of 2022, as well as the sign along um, Military Trail near Lone Pine, which has been there since November 22. I cannot understand how we pass by these locations with city vehicles and we cannot remove them. We are talking about reimagining Riviera Beach, but some things are just not adding up in certain areas of this community. I wanna thank the Public Works, um, Public Works Director for responding to my request, but again, I asked about cleaning of the mon monikers throughout the city, which address the um, communities as well as solar lighting. Tires continue to be dumped throughout our city. Is there a plan to place, place cameras in the areas that experience repeat dumping? 10th Street is a favorite spot. And so something has to be done about that. And then I'm really sorely disappointed with the service that I'm receiving, that we are receiving from the good company. Trash, if it's, if it's wasted, it's left in communities. Cans are left in the middle of the street. I thought we had someone that was monitoring, but apparently that monitoring is not going well because the service that we are receiving is certainly not for the value. And then finally, I'd like to know the anticipated costs, either anticipated or total costs for the Reimagine Re Riviera Beach project. This is quite a large ticket item. And if there is a place that I can find the information that details all of the costs associated with reimagining re Riviera Beach, I'd like to have that. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you. Next is Ms. Doretta Paul, Ms. Marvelous Washington, and Winston. Mr. Winston. Good evening. My Good name evening. Is Hawk. I'm a resident of Riviera Beach, and I'm just here to um, just, uh, state my opinion about the parliamentarian. I really, truly don't think that we need to spend that type of money on getting a parliamentarian because we have the city attorney here, we have the city interim city clerk here, and we have our fine officers here. Thanks to Mr. Josh Lewis, uh, making sure that we are secure and safe in these uh, meetings where everyone goes through a detector, metal detector. And I want to uh, also say that I um, congratulate Mr. Councilman Lawson and also uh, uh, Councilwoman Lanier. But I want to uh, address something that Mr. Uh, Trotter McCoy stated the last meeting concerning um, that the raises, that you all need raises, and that he was at a meeting doing the city business and paid $40 for breakfast. I have never paid $40 for breakfast, from, from, from one person for breakfast. I don't know if he's feeding other people, but for him to say that he paid $40 for a breakfast, and I have gone to Selfish Marina, I've gone all in Jupiter for breakfast. I've never had to pay $40 for breakfast. So my thing is, how much is your dinner? If $40 for breakfast, how much is dinner? And you stating that the uh, city is broke. Many times you said that at the meeting. We are broke. What I think what we should be doing is giving raises to. I think we should be doing to our utility department, these young men and women that's out there in the elements every day, to our ambassadors that's out there, our security that's out there. That's why I think these uh, 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 increase in pay should be. And one of my colleagues, which I worked with, lives in Jupiter Islands, and she said that 
the council people in Rivera Beach, now I don't know how true this is, gets uh, their salary is more than what their council people are getting. And I just wanted to know, Ms. Evans, is that true? Uh, are our council people pay it higher than any in most of the municipalities around this um, this Palm Beach County? And I just think that um, if you want to be chair, if you want to be chair, you know what you have to do, Mr. Coy, because Mr. Lord Brown stated that you approached him at his home. Thank you, Ms. Bob. No, no. Thank you. Next is Ms. Marvelous Washington, Mr. Winston, and then Ms. Chandra Stringer. Good evening, council Good evening. persons, um, city manager, city attorney. I'm Marvelous Washington, Lone Pine Estates. I really don't think I can get up here and say the same. My, my sentiments that everybody else has said is the same. But what bothers me is sometimes your behaviors are contradictory. Um, looking at the agenda today, you're asking to either um, increase the classification of current positions or add new positions. Now, to my understanding, there was a higher every freeze initiated last week. So it's obvious that the city is in dire straits right now. You came in here trying to hire another parliamentarian, the contract services. And then last week, you also tried, to, not last week, the last meeting, you also tried to initiate the new tax assessment. But in the same sentence, you guys decided to not settle a $60,000 case. I don't understand that. And to say it wasn't personal is crazy to me because I, I heard you make a statement today, Dr. Patel, and I thought we were past this, is that you wouldn't support Doug Lawson because he supported recall. The recall wasn't a personal attack against you. The recall was the fact that residents on the west side felt disenfranchised for the actions that you took during that event on July 3rd. And that was just our way of letting you know that we were not happy with your performance. So accept that as a fact, this, the process was circumvented as it is, but it's nothing for you to take into uh, take it personal against anybody else. And I'm sorry that you feel that way, but that was our way. You cannot tell us how to protest. You cannot tell us what, a higher, what our opinion should be. You all should know that. So don't hold that against your co-worker or, or, or your other person on the dais because of what his, how he felt. You can't tell us how to feel. You can't tell us how to protest. In addition to all of those comments, like I said, my sentiments are the same as everybody else. I see the trucks on Garden Road and I think the same thing. Why are they there? But we noticed a sign in our neighborhood today, basically, basically closing a section of our neighborhood before repairs. Now that notice came from the private company that is across the street, not from the city of Rivera Beach. One of the sections in our area, Ms. Uh, Councilperson Lanier, is being closed down during rush hour traffic from 7 a.m. to 4.30 each day. We won't be able to get in or out of our neighborhoods. I don't know who agreed to that, who was notified of that, of that. The HOA wasn't notified about it. We didn't receive any notices about it. No one told us to make an adjustment to our routes or anything. These signs just popped up in our neighborhoods. If we can stop the infighting and actual governing, some of these things won't happen in the city of Rivera Beach. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Winston, Ms. Chandra Stringer, and Bishop Thomas Masters. Good evening. Good evening. Winston. I'm just here to ask a few questions. First, Mr. Evans, sometimes when I came up here and I asked about this food truck, I'm addressing Mr. Evans or the council person. I want to know when you first started out, you said you had some amendments want to be changed for the food trucks to be able to do business in Rivera Beach. Three years, four years, five years, nothing has been done. I would like to know when I came up here, if I'm addressing Mr. Heavens or the council, I want to know who's in charge so we could get this straight, make some changes to the food truck. Food truck is not a restaurant. Food truck is somewhere where you park on the roadside or in a street or a vacant lot, somewhere like that. That's what food trucks were meant to be. And it's been five years and I'm still fighting with this food truck. I'm frustrated. Today, yesterday, my son called me. Daddy, bring your food to the broad county. I got a space down here for you. Of course, I got a space down there. Orlando, Jacksonville. 
30 years in Riviera Beach. This is my home. I want to stay here and do business here. I don't want to go nowhere else. I know nobody knows places. Why can't you just put this, call a council meeting, city manager, which one be, put it in the agenda, let's vote to see if we can get something going. It's been too long, Mr. Evans. I've been asking you over and over. You come up here, talk about it. Two seconds. Yup, 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 it's done. Never heard about it again till I came back up here. I call your secretary a few times to get a meeting with you. No, never return my call. Maybe if I was a big businessman, maybe it would take you to sing a Highland or Jupiter or somewhere else and maybe spend expensive money. Maybe I would be recognized. But since I'm a small business person trying to survive in the city that I love, I can't get nowhere with it. Why is it? You know, this Monday morning when I woke up and I ain't got nowhere to go, tomorrow Friday, tomorrow Thursday, when Friday comes and I ride around, see all this food truck everywhere, Palm Beach, Burroughs everywhere, it drives me crazy knowing I got a business, legit, everything is up to date with it, and all I do is just walk around and look at it. That's my food truck. I didn't build it for that. I never build it to look at it. I build it to work with it. That's why I'm asking you all this time. So next time I come up here, I would like you to tell me if it's the city manager or the council, which one, so when I come the next time, I could address you, not the whole, co the whole crowd. But I want to address either the manager or the council. It's time for you to do something. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Ms. Chandra Stringer, Bishop Thomas Masters, and then lastly, Ms. Mary Brown. Good evening, Chandra Stringer, Good to evening. the Honorable Mayor, to Council, and Mr. Evans, and everybody in their respective places feel like church. Um, I just want to say a couple of things. One, without beating a dead horse and saying everything everybody has said, I'm sad. And I'm sad for a couple of reasons. One, because as a collective body of citizens of Rivera Beach, we are suffering, suffering to the point that I feel like my own opinion, personal vendettas have truncated the interests of the citizens. Particularly one thing, and this is no, we on somebody's side, we're against you. And that's what, how people feel. I hear it day in and day out. Chandra, I'm not going to the meetings. They are gonna do what they wanna do. You should see the look on your faces. And so if everybody keeps saying that, do y'all think we should make some adjustments? And why on God's green earth do we need to spend almost a million dollars to prevent paying $60,000 and get angry when people ask about it? It's in black and white. The unnecessary spending. Mr. McCoy, we may not necessarily like your delivery of everything, but I'm here to tell you, thank you. Thank you for sticking up. Thank you for speaking up. And it's not saying that nobody's not doing their job, but we're tired. I mean, like tired, like oppressed tired, like 1952 tired. The people don't want to vote. They don't want to come out. They're disengaged. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. How much more can you sleep at night knowing you're causing undue harm to citizens' taxes and the money? People are still getting over COVID. And whether you believe it or not, what you give out, you're going to get back. And I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that you feel you have the right to take people's money that they entrust you with and not be a good steward of it. It has to stop. And I'm telling you this, and I'm going on record. This is no threat. This is nothing. We're going to galvanize the community. We go empower them to speak up for themselves because enough is enough. We're tired. Something got to be done different. Pay, that la pay Lady March her money and move on. We got so many other things to worry about. Are you talking about reimagining your city, your way? How? How? Do better. But thank you for your service. Thank you. Bishop Thomas Masters and Miss Mary Bram. To the honorable mayor, my okay, mayor, and to everyone. 
Black History Month ended for some, but it continues for most of us every month. Having said that, Ms. Dora Mae Johnson was a part of national, local, national, international history. A black woman who has passed recently, 91 years of age. Dora Mae Johnson was the lady that spoke to me about the Klan that would ride up and down, which used to be Old Dixie Highway. And I said to her, well, how would you feel if we changed that to President Barack Obama? With tears in her eyes, she looked up, up to me and said, that would make me very happy. She received the key from the city. She received um, accolades and recognition in New York Times. And I'm asking the city on at her funeral on March the 11th to send a representative, a resolution of uh, recognizing her contribution to this city. Riviera Beach is the only city in America, perhaps the world, that has an intersection of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and President Barack Obama Highway at the same spot. Please be there on March the 11th. Single member district. I've always supported single member districts, always. We had a presentation many years ago. Council and mayor, just look at the League of Cities um, information and they will tell you that single member district is the best form of government when it's hybrid, where you have the mayor, everyone votes for the mayor, everyone votes for the citywide seat, and then each member individually, single member district. Look at it again, and I, I think it's the only way to go. I usually don't comment on your actions. As a council, I've been very quiet. I haven't commented at all basically, but I think it's time that you look at the golden rule, which says do unto others as you'll have them do unto you. If it was on the other foot, would you not pay $60,000? Let's pay it and move on. The golden rule, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mary Brown, Madam Chair, this is our last public comment card. Okay. Ms. Mary Brown, Rivera Beach. Good evening. Let me first say that once when I come up here, I know that you all are the governing board. So I do not, never would disrespect not honoring your position, but we only have three minutes. So, so I recognize you all, okay? I would like to say on the 24th and the 25th, Councilman Shirley Lanier, she partnered with Florida Missions of Mercy. On the 24th and the 25th, Ms. Bram attended that. Some of the state representatives was there also cleaning, dentures, pediatric cleaning, you name it. It was a mass of people that was there. And Ms. Graham attended it, and I got my teeth cleaned because normally on a, on a yearly basis, I always have my teeth cleaned. And that was free. Ms. Williams was there also too. It moved along smooth. It was a mass of people that was there. So that was a plus not only for Revere Beach, Jupiter, Miami, Hope Sound, people was there from everywhere. So we say thank you to the councilman. Also, what Bishop said, when I said that the people are uh, in an uproar because they're angry now. And this is what happens when these people get angry in Revere Beach. They begin to uprise about the single member district because they feel as if that you all do not work for us. And things can be better in these communities. Ms. Tanya Davis Johnson, she pointed out some faults over in our area, that sand pit there. The sand goes all out into the roadway drain. The hedges there is over flooded. 
The wall across the street over there where the homes are burnt, grass is burnt. We ask for hedges over there. These things have been made mention about. Nobody has taken any action to address these needs. Yes, something is going away. But can I feel as if that you all can govern? Yes, I do. I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bath because you can govern. But it's how you govern. Attorney Wayne Richards, him and I may have some disagreement, but he comes back and helps me. That's what friendship and love does. We can be agreeable as well as disagreeable. Ms. Marsh, them, they have said things about Ms. Brown, but, 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 but what I tell them, that's okay. That's okay because I am the bigger person because we all are our brother's keepers. Anything that has to be paid out, this is 2023. Let's get over this here. I want you all to leave Thank you, Ms. Brown. here in this city. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Mr. Evans, you have any response yes. to any questions? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, we did host a, a meeting concerning the mooring fields. Uh, right now we have our engineer uh, putting together a comprehensive report that's going to be shared with the board. And then eventually that will make its way back to the board for additional conversations. Uh, we took notes and we are going to provide a copy of that report uh, to the public and, and post that online once that is completed. It was a, a fruitful discussion. Uh, we got a lot of comments and perspectives from all different angles on the issue. And so we, we look forward to having a conversation that um, addresses the needs of the community, but also looks at what options are available uh, to, to address this particular situation. So uh, subsequent conversations will be forthcoming. Uh, with respect to the item on the urban farm, that item I believe is queued up to come before the board at your next regular meeting to attempt to resolve uh, any issues that may be present. Concerning the Wells Recreation Center and, and the playground, um, crews have been uh, working on the site to get the temporary fire station up and operational. I believe the target date to get that facility uh, complete, I think, is in the next 30 to 45 days uh, that the chief is not here. He can provide you greater specificity. And then um, Parks and Recreation Director Blankenship can speak on the, the playground. We can get that information to the resident that did ask. Um, Garden Road. Garden Road is a Palm Beach County road. Uh, I have sent numerous emails, have spoken to county staff. We have a meeting tomorrow at 815 in the morning where we have put together a PowerPoint presentation to tell the county that the roadway and its condition is not acceptable. Uh, we have towed multiple vehicles to the point where law enforcement says some of the tow yards are filled and we can't bring any more vehicles. Uh, we have ticketed number of vehicles. We have seen, we have numerous complaints and we have actually assembled a PowerPoint presentation where we're going to walk them through tomorrow. What are all the issues are? The county continues to say that we should go through the TPA process. That's a five-year process. Um, we don't have five years because we know the condition of that roadway is significant as it relates to its subsurface you know, issues. And uh, there's no curb, there's no gutters, there's no swale. It, it's a problem. And so um, that conversation is happening again at 815 and staff from law enforcement, engineering, public works, and administration will be on the call. And so hopefully some additional assistance from the county or prioritizing this roadway for its uh, reconstruction, at least mill resurfacing and going to put some additional um, sod down. We even talked about the possibility of citing the county for the lack of maintenance on the roadway as well. So uh, I will update the board on that conversation. Um, the signs that persons have Madam met. Chair, can I ask a question regarding that? Go ahead. Mr. Evans, so if the road belongs to the county, how is it that our officers have jurisdictions to enter traffic citations or even tow vehicles if that's, a, in fact, a county road? Because it's in our municipal boundary. Uh, okay. And we've also had the conversations, to your point, Councilperson McCoy, about the possibility of, you know, if this is such an enforcement issue, can PBSO assist because it is something that is consistent and they said, no, it's a it's a local jurisdiction thing. And of course, like everyone else, they're having manpower issues. So they've given us the uh, the carte blanche authority to enforce. 
uh, the laws on there. But to the to the point earlier, we just we had, we're running out of places to tow vehicles, and it's something that's a problem every day. Follow up, Mr. Evans. If that's true, um, many of those parcels, as you know, specifically the one at the corner, the northwest corner of Blue Heron and Gardens Road, which is the public storage, like many of those, are technically within the city limits within the city's boundaries, but they're actually considered unincorporated. I mean, with, with this kind of issue, wouldn't it be prudent to exploring, and I know this is in our comprehensive plan, annexing those properties into the city? Because I don't know if these trucks are being serviced or servicing these warehouses or the industrial areas, but obviously if that's true, then we need to be capitalizing on the Avalon revenue associated with those and possibly bringing them in. In fact, if we're providing water service, I mean, I think, that coupled with the fact that we have this this truck issue is probably more of the reason to have Palm Beach County um, be in support of annexing those properties into the municipal boundaries of the city so that we can benefit and be able to support that. But I don't know why we would continue sending our police services, which takes away from what our taxpayers pay for, to deal with the road that's outside of our municipal boundaries per se. So that would be my suggestion. And do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, um, I, I believe there was significant changes to state statutes as it relates to involuntary annexation. Um, I think it would be hard to annex those properties within the municipal boundaries because invariably they would then start paying the millage rate associated with the city of Riviera Beaches and their taxes would go up. Um, your, their utility services as it relates to um, the utility surtax will go down, but uh, they would end up paying more. And so before you were able to annex parcels. Now it's a little bit more challenging, um, and I don't even think you can do it involuntary. I think it has to be all voluntary. But that's that's certainly uh, things that I will bring up as part of the call with the county from a resource allocation point of view, that yes, to your point, um, we continue to address it because it's an issue with our community and we want to be uh, proactive as much as possible, but it is a drain on resources and so, uh, that's why we're hoping that there is some relief or some plans that are provided from the county um, moving a uh, long term. If the meeting is not fruitful, then uh, we would come back here and ask for um, probably a, a resolution that uh, board to board uh, that you request that the county um, assist in resolving this particular issue that's been an issue in our community for years now. Um, the signage concerning public hearings, uh, those signs are on um, private property and are the applicant's responsibility. I have communicated to staff on, on numerous occasions, and I believe they have made uh, contact with the applicants to pull those signs off their property. Um, city staff doesn't go in and, and remove those signs, but uh, we will then go ahead and try to see if we can uh, encourage them with a personal visit tomorrow. Um, the police department concerning the tire dumping, um, we cannot speak on strategy as it relates to where cameras will be located, but we know where some of the target areas and some of the spots and law enforcement is actually providing for rewards uh, for anyone that um, they get information that leads to an arrest concerning illegal dumping. The solid waste contract with the good company, we do have two solid waste monitors that their job is supposed to be driving the routes before and after and reporting any issues to the good company and they meet once a week. I will um, personally make it a point to touch touch base with with those two individuals and find out what are some of the issues and what needs to happen to to resolve those issues so it doesn't continue to be a problem with some of our residents. Uh, the conversations concerning Reimagine Riviera Beach, we're actually bringing a robust uh, agenda item to the board at your March 15th meeting that will talk about all our capital infrastructure projects and that will have the proposed cost for all the programs and uh, what we intend to do with the program with the uh, reimagine Riviera Beach um, facility plan that looks to address some of our infrastructure. Uh, it also was mentioned about a salary um, for the elected officials. Uh, right now, pursuant to the direction provided by the board, we are doing a salary survey and looking at what other agencies um, look to compensate their elected officials uh, here in the region. So that's a study that a staff is working on and will be coming before the board <coughs> in, in short order. Uh, the other, there was a comment concerning an email that I provided to the board and the department heads concerning a hiring freeze. The hiring freeze was predicated on providing the board with all the options available to you 
uh, when we get into the budget process, uh, because we know that it doesn't seem that the board is uh, inclined to consider any additional revenue streams that we have spoken of. So we did want to provide for all the flexibility necessary to move forward with the construction of the four fire stations, because as previously communicated, the board would have to find 2.7 to $3 million annually of reoccurring savings for the next 20 years to facilitate the construction of four fire stations. If the board did not want to do that and move forward with the construction of the two fire stations that we are moving forward with on, then there is no need for uh, additional revenue. So um, I'm just, we're doing that and it's not a um, all out carte blanche hiring freeze. Public safety, the utility district, the CRA can still proceed forward. We're just being more intentional about some of the vacancies we have. And in some cases, some of the vacancies have been longstanding vacancies that have remained on the books for some time. And so some of the departments may not need that position in that variation. So uh, I didn't want to speak that. And the financial strength of the city is strong, and you will hear that at your next uh, position. Uh, the notice concerning the closure of Canterbury Drive, I received an email on that today. I've been corresponding with a couple of residents on that. I have the utility staff as well as um, development services staff taking a look at that particular issue and seeing what we can do to address that concern that was uh, provided to us. Um, and then the last item was with regards to food trucks. Food trucks are permitted um, and allowed for in the city of Riviera Beach on private property. You just have to go through a process to facilitate an arrangement with a private property owner. I think the gentleman may speak specifically to the municipality providing for opportunities for food trucks. Um, at this particular moment, that's not something that we're uh, moving forward on because we are looking to develop uh, the marina property as well as 2600 Broadway and other, and other properties that we do have our intent is to move forward with the redevelopment of those parcels, but food trucks are permitted in the city. Uh, you just have to go through the process and enter into a relationship with a private property owner to do so. Uh, Madam Chair, that concludes my comments. All right, thank you. Madam Chair, Mr. Yes. Evans. So let me understand, you, you have many of your departments here, department heads here. Are they relieved after public comments? Matt, is, go, ahead, I didn't Mr. Hear Chair. go ahead, Mr. Evans. Your question again, Council Person. So your department heads, are they relieved from work after the public comment section? Madam Chair, if I may. Go ahead. Yes, department directors are, unless they have an item on the agenda, are permitted to leave after public comment section. If you don't mind, why are they here? If you're going to answer all the questions, is there a reason why you asked for them to be here? Yes, Madam Chair. Go ahead. From an operational standpoint, I think it's valuable for them to hear the comments that are made by the public, and then their job is to make sure that as the members of the public leave, that they provide their business card and make contact with the individuals to attempt to resolve their their issues, Madam Chair. Follow up. Go ahead. That sounds really good, Mr. Evans, but what happened when board members want to make comments or have some suggestions for department heads? In fact, I still got some things that's outstanding that's been outstanding for a while. And I'm saying that to ask this question. I mean, if they're there for the public, I mean, should they not stay around to hear the concerns of council members and I can only be able to respond to what you know my colleague says at a meeting I don't necessarily know if they're going to bring something that may spark my interest so I would think either move ours our comments or allow us to follow public comments or allow them to stay to the rest of the meeting I don't want to put that pressure on them but you know I got some things specifically that I want to bring up I know by the time we get to my public comments or the board member comments at the end of the meeting they're going to be gone and specifically, I mean, do you have a response to that? Because I, I would like to ask a couple questions now. And I think that we are moving into our comments at this point. Um, and usually, unless we're talking about voting and changing it, it has been traditionally for him to answer the public's comment. If there's anything that we want to mention during our comments, we do it at the end. That's how we've okay. done it traditionally. And, and, and that's fine. But my question is, would the manager be able to respond to my comments like a department head would if he brought them up to the podium? Well, I'm sure if he is that if you want them to stay and you ask Mr. Evans if they can stay, I mean, that he's the city manager. If he wants them to stay, they can stay. If not, we can always get in touch with them at different times. So it's not like they're not available to us. Madam Chair, that's what I'm saying. I got things that's outstanding that they aren't available. 
And you tried to contact them before the meeting on it? I mean, Madam Chair, this is not before the meeting. This is something that's been consistently ongoing. In fact, I put the city on notice back in October. We're now here in March. Okay. In fact, wait, that was formal notice in October. So there were several conversations that I had back in September. So, okay. I, I mean, I'm trying to understand, is this, uh, I mean, how, how are we going to run this? Because, I, I mean, I think well, I don't give up my authority or my, my right as a citizen by being elected, and I shouldn't be deprived to go through something that's even more arduous than that average member of the public. Well, looking at the agenda, we are finished with public comment and we still have item 12A to do, which is under discussion and deliberation. And then we will get to discussion by city manager, city attorney, and then count. <coughs> Madam Clerk, 12A. Discussion and deliberation, minority employment and affordable housing opportunity plan. Madam Chair, we do have one public comment card on this item. The acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. All right. Okay, Mr. Evans. Madam Chair and members of the board, at this time, I forget if I could have the Director of Development <coughs> Services, Mr. Clarence Sermons, to make this presentation. All right, Mr. Sermons. <coughs> Good evening, Madam Chair, evening. Uh, members of council, honorable mayor, Madam Attorney. I'm uh, excited to be before you this evening to give you a detailed but uh, precise presentation as this is the last item on the agenda. Uh, I have a presentation uh, on the screen as well as a printout of it before you. Um, there is also a copy of the a strike through underlying version of this ordinance that was a part of the packet that was passed out. Uh, with this presentation, my intentions are to go through the changes that have been proposed by staff, uh, those that were mentioned at the first reading of this item, as well as address the questions or uh, concerns that were raised during first reading. So I will uh, go through these and I have uh, formulated this presentation such that uh, after each topic area, we can um, pause to address anything that has uh, that I have uh, stated um, on that particular topic before I go to the next one. Uh, so if it um, uh, pleases you, Madam Chair, I'll proceed in that fashion. All right. Uh, I will start my presentation by, again, just giving a overview of the purpose of the MEHOP ordinance. Again, this has been on our books since the 80s. Uh, it was updated most recently in 2006. Uh, we have been working on this for the better part of a year to create a, a more modern uh, version of this ordinance. So a lot of it you have heard as we did bring an ordinance uh, before you several months ago. Um, but I, again, I will start with the overview of the uh, purpose and intentions of it. Uh, so the four, four purposes are to one, decrease unemployment by encouraging the hiring of minorities in the construction industry, including minority businesses, skilled and non-skilled labor and professionals. Two, provide a means of increasing the supply of affordable housing in this city. Three, encourage revitalization of the downtown, particularly mixed use development. And the fourth purpose is to accomplish the objectives of this section through the use of a voluntary program utilizing zoning related incentives in various zoning districts throughout the city. So this ordinance accomplishes these purposes through optional bonuses that are offered to developers. And those bonuses vary by the zoning district. So for example, in the commercial general district, the bonuses that can be obtained are a height bonus of additional five stories or a, and or a parking reduction of up to 20% on the total required spaces. So based on the zoning district, the bonuses that you are eligible for vary um, based on what is most attractive and financially beneficial to the developer in that zoning district. The ordinance allows developers to participate in the program by providing minority employment or providing affordable housing uh, for the city. As you know, during first reading, it was discussed and we have amended the ordinance to say and for projects that are receiving bonus 
uh, commercial residential units. Uh, so the original or existing structure does have or we are we are currently changing that to an and but as you can see by the table it tells you what the uh, bonus is and how you can uh, meet the requirements to get it either participating in minority employment and or uh, participating in the housing uh, affordable housing development of the city Madam chair M mr simmons i'm sorry you said and so you're proposing that it gets changed to end? Is that what you're saying? No, this was discussed at the first reading of the item to change the or to end. What does that mean it was discussed? Because I mean, was that specifically that was voted on and amended? Yes. Okay. All right, well, I mean, I'm confused because you said Discussed. Okay, I thought it was adopted, but I'm trying to figure out that I missed something because you seem like you're backpedaling. No, this this section of my presentation just describes the ordinance as it exists in our books right now. I just made a note that during first reading of the proposed amendment of the ordinance that we did change that to an end. But right now, I'm just describing how it exists in Municode. If you were to look it up today, thank you. So now I am transitioning to discuss the proposed changes for this ordinance. Um, and the list of them are update, updating the definition section, increasing the per unit fee amount for housing, expansion of the language related to the housing trust fund, expansion of the language related to employment, expansion of the language related to housing components, adding the IHCPUD as an eligible zoning district for bonuses, adding resort hotel unit conversion as an allowed bonus. And I'll go by them one by one, starting with definitions. So with these revisions, uh, the definition of affordable housing uh, was revised and the definition of minority uh, has been revised. Uh, and we have added definitions of attainable housing, workforce housing, market rate housing, local business, and minority business. The proposed definition for affordable housing, you have seen uh, the, in the previous uh, attempted amending of the ordinance as well as first reading, it has not changed. Housing that is affordable for households at or below 80% of the AMI. Area median, median income is defined by the US Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, as income limits per household size that meets the maximum housing payments established by HUD, Florida Housing Finance Corporation, or the city of Riviera Beach. Attainable housing, housing that is affordable for households between 81% and 120% of the AMI. Area median income is defined by the US Department of Housing and Urban Development as income limits per household size and that meets maximum housing payments established by HUD, Florida Housing Finance Corporation, or the city of Riviera Beach. Housing that is uh, workforce housing. Housing that is affordable for households between 121% and 140% of the area median income. Area median income eligibility for workforce housing programs and incentives will be based on the percentage of the medium income as per published by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Fannie Mae, the state of Florida, without regard to household size. Market rate housing, housing that is affordable for households above 140% of the AMI area median income eligibility for market rate housing programs and incentives, if any, will be based on a percentage of the median income as published by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Fannie Mae, the state of Florida, without regard to household size. Local business. This is the first definition that you have not seen before. We are proposing this to mean any business that has established and agrees to maintain a permanent place of business located in a non-residential zone staffed with full-time employees within the limits of the city or shall maintain a staffing level for the proposed work of at least 50 percent who are residents of the city of riviera beach minority this uh, i will not read the entire definition but the the most pertinent part is the beginning minority means members of the of groups including African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Pacific Americans, and Native Americans legally residing in or that are citizens of the United States or its territories as defined below. And below it describes what we would define each of those groups 
to be and who would be a part of it. I mean, we have def uh, adopted this definition based on the county or recommended, I'm sorry, this definition based on uh, what the county has. The next new definition is minority business. Minority business means any legal entity except a joint venture that is organized to engage in for-profit transactions, which is certified as being at least 51% owned, managed, and controlled by one or more minority group members. Those are the proposed uh, changes for the definitions, and I would make way at, at this time for any uh, deliberation or comments or feedback on those. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Sermons. Uh, the minority business, certified by at least 51% managed and owned. Who's gonna make the determination? They would have to demonstrate that information uh, to the city staff. So I just come in front of you and I show that I'm black. That makes me 51% owner. How do we demonstrate that? For They would have to document who the owners are of the business and provide that in the materials. So, in, and as we described during the um, first reading of this item for uh, persons to be eligible for the employment section, they would have to provide a report to the city that demonstrates they're in compliance with all of these things. So in those uh, report documents, if they are, um, are stating that they've already engaged minority businesses for work, um, they would have to show that that business is either um, either registered as minority business uh, or uh, meeting this definition for ownership. So registered as minority business, um, certified with the county, registered in what in what arena? Because um, any of these corporations can add someone to their sun biz and say that they're a minority business now. And that would give them the ability to respond to this minority business without certification, justification, idea of how this 51% is calculated. So is staff going to just look at SunBiz and see that there's an owner listed that's a, a um, minority race and then determine that's the minority uh, business definition? It's just making sure that the definition is outlined by whatever certification we're going to expect so that when it comes to the board or when it comes to your department that you have clear, concise understanding of how to determine this is a minority business. Yes, we do use SunBiz often um, when verifying companies, especially in the business tax receipt operations. So we, we are very familiar with using it. Um, and we, we could, again, include or add language uh, that they have to be certified with a certain organization um, with the county. Um, that, that is something that we could add here. Um, this is a starting point uh, for what we found with uh, other jurisdictions. And I guess because I've seen that um, in private sector, businesses have added uh, women to their business, their wives, or significant others, or minority business partners to get additional credits or incentives and in incentivizing uh, municipalities or other agencies. So it's just being clear and concise that what represents minority business um, and having the proper definition. So this is up for more discussion. And that's why I'm asking the question so that we have clarity when it's passed on the second reading. Local business uh, definition. Local business is only going to be determined as Riviera Beach businesses. As proposed, yes. We could add additional language for the county, um, but for the starting point we propose here, yes, it would be Riviera Beach. Or, I'm sorry, or a business that has at least 50, I believe it said 50% 50, 50 of their workforce uh, for the project are Riviera Beach residents. And that was, I believe, a topic of discussion last time, just making sure that we're not being restrictive to we want to employ and empower the um, local community, make sure that their jobs are being provided. But are we going to put them in a position to not be able to obtain or secure the staffing and the businesses in the city if we've created local as just Riviera Beach? Um, I like the addition or of the 50% staffing because that would require that any business can come in and hire at least 50% of the staff. So I do like that addition, but it's just the local determination. I know the county looks at local as Palm Beach County, but I also want to make sure that we're incentivizing and benefiting Riviera Beach and the residents and businesses in Riviera Beach. So the definition is just... I want to kind of move into the ordinance to see exactly what's the requirement with the local business and then how does it affect their uh, additional density. 
so that we can kind of be clear with that. But the 50% staffing was a good addition to that. Um, those were my only comments for those two items. Thank you. I'm Chair. Go ahead. So, Mr. Sermons, close to that point, how did you arrive at 51%? For the local business definition? Correct. These no, 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 for not minority. For minority. <coughs> minority. Minority business. Uh, we, for, uh, for the majority of these definitions, we looked at other uh, government entities. Uh, this one, I believe, we modeled off of um, what is utilized in the uh, city of Fort Lauderdale. And we, um, we cut, we you chopped up some things that were not applicable and, and we kept these major parts. Um, but we did feel that this was a good starting point for a definition of minority business. Okay. And, uh, you know, 50%. Anything above 50% is considered a majority owner. So I don't know why you would go to 51%. That doesn't really seem like that jives with industry standards. I mean, majority is anything above 50%. So, I mean, you could actually have that. I actually met somebody that actually has, and ironically, you know what's interesting? We have a business here that partners with Mark Cuban, um, one of his businesses from the Dallas Mavericks. And there's a really unique arrangement. And I kind of had a conversation. And ironically, his name is Doug. Is it you? Mm -hmm. No, but and it's literally like a situation where Mark Cuban owns 49.5% and Doug owns 50.5%. So that's why I'm curious as to why you arrived at 51% because anything above 50% is considered um, a majority, at least in most cases that I've seen. That's the first one. And I don't know why for a lot of the, what, what part of their code that applies to. But let me move to the next one. Attainable housing. At what point, or is there a desire that the city of Riviera Beach by ordinance describes what monthly housing payments should be? Because that's listed here, and I don't understand why. I'm sorry, the attainable housing uh -huh. you set forth the the income limits per household and the maximum housing payments as defined by you have here HUD for the finance and then Riviera Beach. Why is that? So we would default to what is set by HUD. But this is saying that the city has the right to adopt its own definition of maximum housing payments for this class if we so desire to. Okay. But I, I guess I'm, un, I'm confused as to what actually would prevail, what would be applicable. I mean, if you have Riviera Beach, what has its own definition of what attainable housing is, if it comes back with a different definition, like how do you determine what is going to be applicable? Well, the definition itself, we have modeled to be consistent with HUD so that it would track with any um, any applicable funding or grant programs and things like that that they would have. In terms of the uh, maximum housing payments, we could also utilize that um, based on how the definition is structured, but we could also set our own for the city of Riviera Beach and this definition allows that. Mr. Sermons, if they're in conflict, how do you resolve the conflict? I mean, I'm not sure if you don't understand, but I'm just simply asking, you can't put forth a definition that has the income limits from three different organizations. If there is some sort, I think they review this at HUD at least annually. We might review an ordinance every 20 years. So what prevails? That's what I'm asking. And I'm sorry if it's not clear, but I'm, no, I'm, I'm no. trying to understand how do you- I, I know, I think I follow you. I, I think you're saying that we need to limit it to just one. Yes. Okay, oh, would you recommend HUD or, or, or any of the other ones? Because um, I think the definition itself is modeled after HUD, so we can just scratch off uh, Florida Housing uh, Finance Corporation and the city of Riviera Beach just to make it uh, one and clear. If that, make, if that helps, I, I would think so. And then I would think the same applies to workforce as far as, you know, if their medium incomes are in conflict, what actually will be applicable? Yes, I, I believe we use that terminology in the first three definitions, so we can amend all of them to um, just utilize what's established by HUD. And, you know, I, I, again, I don't know why we go back to this local business definition. That's specifically what I said, that we have too small of a market in Riviera Beach to think that we're going to attract um, minority subs out of Riviera Beach. It's just not that many. I mean, you can't go into, if there was yellow pages and find, you know, five different you know, black plumbing companies in the city of Riviera Beach. That's just not going to happen. And I think you're limiting us to to this is going to be problematic, very much problematic. So I thought we agreed that Palm Beach County was a better um, 
a better uh, gauge on determining local. That's what I would hope that we can bring into the ordinance. Madam Chair. Go ahead. I, I agree with Councilman McCoy. I thought the last meeting we said it was going to uh, use Palm Beach County's list of that will provide us subs and contractors. In Madam Chair. Are you finished, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Go ahead. So, so wouldn't it be even easier for staff if there was language in here that incorporated Palm Beach County's, you know, minority certification program or whatever the equivalent if it changes the name? Because by very nature, those businesses have to already be registered and have a domicile location or principal place of business in, in the county. So it just seems to me that that would be a catch all in the event that, you know, you have this other issue where I, I think it's called the work work base is that what it's called workforce and pardon me we're seeing this for the first time which i don't <laughs> never ever like to to try to sort through something like this at the first meeting in the meeting um but this also provides for staff with full-time employees within the city or should maintain staffing level of proposed work of at least 50 percent who are city of Riviera beach who are residents of city of Riviera beach Mrs. Sermons, again, I, I I can't speak too much to the staffing level, but certainly I think Palm Beach County should be expand, expanded as far as the local business um, network. Madam Chair, comments that, Madam Chair. Uh, for clarification on that one, uh, are you recommending that we just go for minority businesses, that we just go with uh, who is registered with the counties? Um, organization for minority business, or are you saying we should amend this definition uh, to say that um, uh, that we are, I'm sorry for local definition is the one that I, I think you were on, that we should uh, not limit local to Riviera Beach, but the entire county. That's what I'm sure. Okay. You're finished, Mr. So, Sermon? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. So, just to follow up on that same point, I guess the, just for clarity, are we looking at the county's program as the certification of the standard or because my concern would be that as a local business, I've been a, a local minority business owner in Palm Beach County for 20 years, uh, 15, 17 years and in Riviera Beach for 12. I'm just getting my certification with the county now and hopefully very soon I'll have my um, certification as a certified minority business, but I wouldn't want to restrict my brand of business as a local minority business to be able to benefit from these potential contracts or partnering with these organizations to do this development. So I, I wouldn't just restrict it to that. I think that we need to create a certification that does not just restrict to Riviera Beach, but also Palm Beach County, and then also have determination of how we're going to define minority because I, I, I love the county's program, but even my personal example of being a business here in the community, I would, I would not qualify because I'm not certified as of yet. So it's figuring out how we're going to determine what's going to define local and minority. I agree with my colleague that uh, local needs to be at least Palm Beach County, maybe incentivizing additional um, credits, incentives, whatever density, whatever reduced cost, something if they use actual local Riviera Beach but making local represent Palm Beach County versus Riviera Beach, and then possibly additional incentives for Riviera Beach. Then the minority piece, uh, it's really talking to the county and their certification process of what they're doing, but not limiting it to just their certification process. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anyone else? Madam Chair. Go ahead. Um, I want to ask, so they, where did we land in terms of the definition or um, how would you find out if they were a minority business? I understand that you can use stock certificates, you can use partnership agreements, you know, Schedule K, Schedule Cs, but the person who is running the business has to control it and be a minority. Is that, um, go ahead. And I don't believe I follow. You're saying with how they are um, considered minority with the county's program? Yes. 
I'm not sure of all the details of how they um, um, attain registration with the county. Okay, because I think the question was, how are we going to figure out if it's a minority business? What do how, what do we document to say that they are? And I think that some of the things that they use are Schedule Ks or Schedule Cs. They look at stock certificates. They look at partnership agreements to determine that the minority is the controlling partner in the business mm -hmm. to make that determination. We would, excuse me, we would put the burden on the applicant to prove that they are a minority business. And we would have a, um, an established definition of minority, which we um, propose on the screen. And they would have to prove to us that they meet that, uh, that definition. So um, I can't say um, with complete detail of exactly everything that, that we would utilize to say that, yes, you meet it. Um, but this is what we are proposing for uh, what that standard would be. Um, but this is not something that staff does on a regular. So it is something that would be new to staff to make sure we can, um, the definition is to make sure we have clear standards of what it means. But in terms of how they prove that um, there would be some uh, things that we would probably have to consider. Um, and also I think that we should follow the county's program. I mean, as we get closer to considering an MBE program for the city. Um, mm -hmm. I think that we had, we're currently doing research in terms of uh, disparities in uh, providing contracts to minorities. So following that protocol with the county should get us closer to that program. Uh, Madam Chair. Are you finished, Ms. Lanier? Uh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I was very much in favor of using the county's program until I heard uh, Councilman Lawson say that it has been years, if I heard him correctly, that he's been waiting to get certified by the county. And I would certainly wouldn't want to exclude any minority business owner just because the county is not yet caught up with their paperwork or whatever it is that causes the delay. So uh, I guess I'm thinking that it may be onus to determine whether or not it's a minority business might have to fall back on city staff uh, rather than relying on the county exclusively. And I don't know if I heard him correctly, but that Madam would Chair. be my concern. Go ahead. No, just just for clarity, um, it was, I have not been waiting. Um, they're, they're not delayed or behind. I haven't submitted for certification for minority business with the county. So I'm not sure of their timeline or their process. It's just I would not be, I would be excluded because I didn't get certified with the county. And I wouldn't want to restrict a business like myself from being able to participate. But um, I'm not sure of their timeline, but I would actually recommend staff if they reach out our former councilwoman that was here is actually uh, the director over at the um, Office of Equal Business Opportunity. So she may be a great point of contact, Tanya Davis Johnson, to talk about um, how do we certify and justify minority or women businesses? Because um, as we said earlier, they have to provide and prove and demonstrate that they have a controlling interest. They have to provide documentation and sign off on it. So um, in addition to using this program, for certification purposes, but also making sure we have a process in place once we get to that level. And if we approve this ordinance on the 15th, I'm assuming we're gonna to wanna to be at that level very quickly. So it's knowing what is gonna be the requirements once we put this on the table. Um, and, Madam Chair, I think that if, if there are no standards, then there's more room to, lack of better terms, game the system if there are no standards in place. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Go ahead. Mr. Simmons, this is going to be back on the 15th? Yes, that is the uh, expectation from staff. Okay, so when do we as a board have an opportunity to review it? When to review what will be brought on the 15th? Correct. Because if it's going to be anything like what's happened in the past, I can tell you right now I'm not going to support it. It'd be dead on arrival because we have a problem in this organization where we get agendas Friday evening for a meeting that occurs on Wednesday. We go into an agenda review on Tuesday. So like, quite frankly, I don't know what people think. Maybe it's believed by some members of the public that our only work is when we walk into this building, but that actually is so far from the truth. It's more that's done outside and preparing for a meeting because you have to meet with everybody about every single item on the agenda, then go and talk to staff about it. So I don't want to take something so complex like this and have three days to review whatever you and your staff come back with. I just think if we're going to wordsmith this, we need to make sure that we have time to understand the product. And then if we have questions, we can then have ample opportunity to bring it to staff in agenda review. Because I don't want to be stuck with the final version that's up for adoption and only have a couple of days to review it. 
Madam Chair. You're finished, McCoy? It's a, yes. I'm, Go ahead. It's a question. Okay. Did you get your answer? Oh, I'm sorry, what was the question? I, okay, so can you give me a better time frame on when we'll have something back relative to this? Uh, it's a finished product. When the agenda is posted, we'll make sure that this information is a part of it. You, you, you missed what I said, right? No, I, I can't. I, Madam Chair. I, what I'm saying to you is that the agenda, in many cases, don't always come a week ahead of time. Mr. Evans has the answer for you. Go ahead. Madam Chair. Um, if I may, we'll, um, we'll get posted at least a week uh, out in advance. Um, and if it is done early as it relates to a draft, uh, we could circulate that um, document. And if there's any uh, questions the board may have before we post, uh, we, can, we can handle those questions. So as soon as we make the, the tweaks and modifications, we'll get a, um, a version out to the board to see if we encapsulated all the changes that we believe. We just ask that if you have any questions or comments with respect to what is in the uh, proposed document that you uh, reach out to staff and we can Madam Chair. resolve those issues. You know, Mr. Evans, let's, let's be frank. I do, I always have questions. That's just my nature. I believe nothing I hear and only half of what I see but I think what you're saying, Mr. Evans, is never, ever occurring. What we have on this screen and what we have in front of us was just handed to us while we're in the meeting. So I don't want to sit here and suggest like we're always in lockstep because we have no idea what's being proposed until it gets here. And then we're, we're literally placed on an interrogation stand and being asked, what do we want to change? I don't really feel that comfortable because I haven't had time to really analyze this. So while I understand it's your intent to put this out a week in advance, Let's not suggest that this has been the practice, because even today, this is our first time seeing this, despite me even asking to know this beforehand. So, you know, I mean, it's wishful thinking, but I just need a little bit of help. That's all I'm asking. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Not that it would be, you know, uh, my desire to, to, to postpone or, or delay this item, but it also was, it was my recommendation to have this discussion with the board. And yes, you should have gotten this information in advance of the meeting to be able to see strike down, strike, strike through underline or what have you as it relates to the, those particular topics. But I will make it a point, a personal point that we get you um, the board this information because you don't convene for another meeting until the 15th. So there is some some time over the next couple of days where staff can get a draft out there uh, in advance and then be able to, to feel some of the questions that the board may have in advance of your meeting, but also making sure that it is posted uh, seven days before your regular city council meeting. All right, Mr. Lawson, did you have a question? Uh, I had comments, but those were my comments that address um, receiving of this presentation and going over this and having the proper documentation in a timely fashion. So. It's just making sure that we have it so we can review it because trying to go through these items during our agenda review, this is what I asked for. And I know that we just are receiving it now, but it's making sure that we have it ahead of time. So thank you, Madam Chair. All right, anyone else? All right, Mr. Madam Chair, we do have a public comment card. You still have more? Yes. He still has more to go. Uh, the next section that we are proposing adjustments to are the uh, fee in lieu of construction. Uh, again, as stated, uh, a person can comply or a developer can comply with this um, ordinance uh, through providing uh, affordable housing. Uh, to secure a bonus under the housing requirements, a developer can construct affordable units or pay a fee in lieu of construction for the units. The current fees were set in 2006 and have not been adjusted since. Uh, given the changes in the market and economy, as well as the need for affordable, attainable, and workforce housing, our recommendation is to adjust those fees at this time. Our existing code has the per unit contribution set at a percentage of the sale price per unit, uh, 3%, and then it specifies a minimum per unit contribution, which is currently 30000 uh, Before you now is a, a sampling of the in, in lieu fee uh, of some other municipalities and the county in, in our area. So right now, uh, at the top of that, in terms of fee amounts, 
are the town of Jupiter, uh, followed by Delray Beach at 160,000. Palm Beach County recently uh, increased theirs to 136,000 at 848 for single family home units, $114,040 for townhomes. The proposed amount for Riviera Beach, we have 105,000. And below that would be the city of Boynton Beach at $82,986,000. We have recommended to increase our minimum in lieu of contribution requirements to better correspond uh, with our area. Um, but there, uh, and I will um, walk you through what those fees look like where we have them pegged now, but also walk you through some other options that we have based on feedback that was uh, provided during first reading. So on the, the diagram before you is a hypothetical of maximum build out under the IHC PUD zoning district. Um, so if a development proposed to use the maximum FAR, the maximum height, uh, the project could look something similar to this. And so we've color coded uh, the building so you could uh, see how the numbers are calculated based on what we have proposed for the code right now. So if they are allowed to rezone to IHC PUD, which is a, um, essentially a special exception zoning district, um, and they want to go beyond what's allowed by right, which is 20 floors, that's indicated by the purple and the pink together, uh, what is allowed by right. What is in green is the bonus area that they could attain through participating in the MEHOP ordinance. So to calculate what their contribution would be under the code, uh, you would take the number of units in the green area, multiply it by 0.5, and then by our per unit fee of $105,000. So in the green area, each floor in this hypothetical contains about 15 units, and there's five floors that they can attain in MEHOP. So that would be a total of 85 units in the bonus area in green. That would be multiplied by 0.5 and then by $105,000. And then the contribution amount to the housing trust fund would be $4,462,500. So in looking at other models, we wanted to give uh, you all options on how we could uh, how we could uh, get this accomplished in other ways. So another uh, municipality uh, uses a percentage of construction costs to calculate what the contribution would be. So it's not based on the number of units, but the total uh, construction valuation. Uh, so that's based on the site plan sets, cost estimates, uh, contracts for the job, and other information that is uh, always uh, or typically collected uh, by the building official to establish the construction valuation of a project. Uh, so for this particular uh, hypothetical, the project valuation was $175 million for construction. And this municipality that we looked at uh, requires 2% of that to be contributed to the housing, uh, or to their minority, um, sorry, workforce or affordable housing uh, trust fund in order to participate in the program. So in that scenario, if we use 2%, which that municipality does, it would be a $3.5 million contribution to their housing trust fund. So that's the second potential model that could be considered. Third is the per square footage model. And this one is uh, utilized in the, um, in the South Florida region and some counties as well. Uh, this is, based on the amount of residential square footage included in the project, they charge a per square foot fee. So in this scenario, in our hypothetical here, the amount of residential square footage is approximately $746,000. If the, the rate was $5 per square foot, the contribution to the housing trust fund would be $3,730,000. So this is a, a table comparison of those three scenarios. Uh, what we have currently proposed at $105,000 per unit with our uh, current amendment as was heard during first reading. And then this is what it would look like if we used a square footage system or a percentage of construction costs. Again, those are alternatives to calculating based on the number of units 
and things like the price per square footage or the fee per square footage or the percentage of construction costs, all of those things are uh, numbers that this board could establish and that we could uh, adjust. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. if I may, a question. I don't understand on the page that has the two, the page prior to this one, if you would go back. So this says that a fee per square footage model, if $5 per square foot was used, the total project residential square footage was 746,000. We have a total of $1,493,320. Why on the next page does it say $3,730,000? I apologize, that number is incorrect on the printout you have. <laughs> I corrected it on this one that's above. So oh, the okay. correct number is the three million, and also on the next page, it also shows the okay. correct number for that one. Our but our handout that. is wrong. Okay. Yes. And my second question is, what is the current NEHOP? For example, if a developer was already in the process of working on a project and in fact purchased property with the thought in mind that the city would be taking one course of action. Uh, to charge that developer for uh, housing, et cetera, or, or to require the developer to hire a certain minority, certain percentage of minority. Will this adoption of this uh, ordinance change that process for that developer that's already purchased property based on the understanding that it was the previous way? In other words, what's the difference between the way we have been looking at this or proposed to potential developers and what we have here before us. So the uh, the top row on this uh, table here is what was heard um, during first reading, and it's also what was in the ordinance when it was previously brought to this board uh, this past fall. Um, even though that ordinance um, has since been rescinded, uh, that top number is consistent with what was in there, and we can at this time consider adjusting those figures in terms of the uh, per unit fee, which we had set at 105, or using a different model such as has been proposed. So again, we are uh, giving those options uh, to the, the council tonight. Madam Chair? Go ahead. Did, I, I guess I missed, it. did you answer uh, her question in reference to um, essentially, I, I guess she was asking if there's a business or an organization that is grandfathered into the previous contribution. No, um, we can only uh, administer what's in the city's regulations. And I think if, um, if a project um, made financial decisions based on what they expected to be approved, um, it's certainly worth consideration um, for um, for staff, and it has been, um, but we can't uh, say that they are vested in a um, ordinance that is not on our books, so we would have to move forward uh, with either what's in the books now or what is approved with the ordinance that's before you for consideration. And I guess I just wanted that on the record in clarity because I didn't get an answer for that, but that essentially will answer what happens moving forward. Um, for the actual proposal. Okay, I apologize if I didn't uh, initially answer that question. All right, anything else? Um, and I would note at the bottom of this, uh, so uh, just a frame of re reference for the additional value given by MIHOP. For reference, the sales value of those 85 bonus units in the green area for the diagram would be a, uh, approximately $127 million if those units were sold at 1.5 million per unit. These are, again, the top floors, so those are your penthouse levels. So uh, we could presume that they would sell for a very high amount. Um, however, city staff does not know the exact profit mar margin per unit uh, for the development or their delivery cost per unit, so we can't necessarily say that each of those units are full profit, but again, that's the, uh, the, a low end estimate of what that um, sales value of the bonus area would be, that green area that I referred to. So for the fee in lieu of construction, uh, the policy considerations that uh, staff is requesting feedback on uh, are the options on the screen. 
uh, to keep the current structure we have um, at the current rate that we um, initially proposed um, or increase the per unit contribution, switch to a per square footage structure or switch to a percentage of construction valuation uh, structure. And um, if there's any um, feedback or direction that the board can provide, that would be appreciated. And uh, again, for the record, the staff recommendation was the uh, number one, um, and we uh, kept the number consistent with what was brought forward before. Madam Chair, and you're saying keep the current structure? Yes. Which, which was 105. That's correct. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Mr. Sermon, so let's... So applications submitted prior to the adoption of this will still be able to utilize the previous um, amounts that was contributed, I'm sorry, the previous contribution amounts. Which previous contribution amounts? I mean, so we got $30,000, I believe is one of them for. Yes, our, our code currently says $30,000 per unit is the contribution rate, yes. And have we received applications invoking the MEHOP or the additional density provided through MEHOP? We have not received any applications to uh, utilize the, uh, the amended, well, the, the staff has received one application, however, it could not be processed because this ordinance had not been approved. Um, therefore, the um, my, that's exactly my point, Mr. Sir. Sorry. So, if this ordinance isn't approved, if this ordinance fails, mm -hmm. would that application then be able to take? In first of all, I don't understand. If an application comes in, they rely on what's printed in the Muni Code, what's codified in Muni Code as of that date. So, my question is: Are this application that you have, ABC Corporation or ABC Developers, are they going to utilize and be allowed to submit to the previous contribution amounts? Even if this fails, even if MIHOP fails, this amendment the, fails. The one application that has been submitted relies on the IHC PUD zoning district, which is not in the ordinance today. So they're not eligible at all. And that application, therefore, cannot be processed unless this amendment is approved. This, this ordinance is solely about MIHOP. This has nothing to do with IHC PUD. That was adopted last year. The What's proposed for MEHOP under IHCPUD is not currently in our ordinances. Okay, gotcha. So you mean specifically that that zoning designation? Correct. That currently that zoning designation is not in the MEHOP ordinance that's on our books. Well, what about for RM20 and, and those other ones? Yes, if we receive the application under that, then we could absolutely move forward. Okay. And again, uh, the, the options uh, that we had listed there, again, address some of the questions that were raised as to whether there could be other ways to consider the contribution amounts. Um, again, we can uh, move forward with what was previously opposed, or we could uh, look to increase the fee, um, but we do have those options that we did uh, look into for consideration this evening. Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, I, I guess I, I am very concerned about developers who purchase property in the city with the thought that they would be not grandfathered, but that, that they, they had certain expectations uh, of the increase in height based on our previous ordinances. And are you saying that they have not put a proposal in front of you and so therefore would not be, as it were, grandfather? No, with as far as the ordinances, no, we would not be able to grandfather anyone based on um, based on the ordinance that was rescinded before. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm not aware of any abilities of staff to um, make that rate apply. There is a provision of the MEHOP ordinance that allows the developer to petition for relief um, for their contribution amount. 
That is something that is in the existing language of the code. Um, so that is an option. Uh, um, so there's not full rigidity in the ordinance, um, but. Let me be very transparent about this. Okay. I think when we saw what was happening in Lake Park, as a body, we said, we want that in Riviera Beach. I just want to make sure that nothing that we do tonight, rather not tonight, but on the 15th, would prevent that developer from moving along with the project that he and his company envision for Riviera Beach, such that we could have something similar to what Lake Park has. That's my concern, and I don't, I don't care about any any other. I mean, there may be other developers who who are waiting in the wings to see what happens here. But my, I am concerned about that developer who purchased property in Riviera Beach based on the thought that we had a certain structure in place to accommodate the height that he wants. And I, I think my colleagues would agree that we all were of one mind on this in terms of wanting that kind of development at the north end of Broadway. M Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. But I'm obviously not speaking for anyone else. Thank you. Please don't speak. I, I'm, I just made that clear. I'm not speaking for anyone else. I'm saying that when we saw that project back then, we were of one mind. Thank you. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Well, I would have to completely disagree with my colleague. Um, serving at the pleasure of my community, being duly elected um, by the residents, I'm concerned with every parcel of land across the entire uh, city, not just one developer, not one organization that bought land to develop. Um, if we're looking at the process of somebody being grandfathered in or a code being antiquated, that means we would have allowed Fane Lozman to go forward. <coughs> So if we're truly going to look at just one individual or one entity, I want us to be very cautious and careful with what we expect and what policies we set that doesn't represent one organization. I'm very excited for what we saw Lake Park has, but I also have to think about the policy that we have to implement and the timeline that we have and the lack of development we've seen on the Broadway corridor. I agree with you that I'm excited, but one parcel is not gonna move me. One unit, one building one structure that will help tremendously with our ad valorem tax that brought an additional 10% to the tax base for Lake Park. I'm very excited about all of that, but I'm gonna pass policy that represents the entire city across the entire board and not pass this policy based upon one developer coming to the table. This board dynamic has changed tremendously. The leadership has trained, changed tremendously and the community sees the great potential in Riviera Beach. We have the last undeveloped land on the East Coast of the United States that is in a minority community with beachfront, portfront, and railroad. So please, I'm not gonna base our decision tonight or ever on one developer coming to the table. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, go ahead. Uh, I put in. I first. didn't hear you, you did put in? All right, go ahead. Well, I, you know, I don't know if I was gonna actually say it as eloquently as councilman or say, um, what do you call this, chairperson elect. Um, but Councilwoman Botel, I, I would, I, I really wish there was a recording to play back what you just said. You don't care about any other project or anything else That's in the not, city. That's exactly what you said because everybody over here looked down there in complete utter shock. Do you like black people or no? Because clearly you just said something that you only are concerned about one single project in the city. When we make a code, it's applicable throughout all of the city. Ironically, IACPUD only applies in the CRA, but I don't know if you could ever say anything that was more discriminatory in here. And that goes right back to the, what we just went through last year. And I know it's tough being up here sometimes because you really come from a place of emotion, but I don't know what the hell you just said. In fact, somebody already sent me a text like, what the hell? I mean, I was outraged and I'm looking at the same expression from people in the room. So if you're only concerned with one project, let that be. And, and I find it completely interesting being that you're a material witness regarding a development that's specifically centered around one property. And that really says a lot about you, Councilwoman. So, you know, I don't know what you think it is, but perception is reality. Yeah, my temper, is, hell, I should have a temper. If anybody's in here that's not outraged by what was just said, I think you're the problem. And that's what happens in, in municipal government. We get too, too caught up in the foolishness and we allow this stuff to go by. And that's when evil prevails, when righteous people sit by and do nothing. And I think you should be repudiated for saying that comment. 
Like I'm elected across the city, good, bad, or indifferent. If someone calls me, in fact, I'm dealing with an issue that was in Councilwoman um, Miller Anderson's district, and I know she's been involved, and I keep getting emails and I have to respond, but I just think that that was completely disingenuous. And I'm not the only one that thinks so. So those were my comments. Thank you, Councilman Lawson, because clearly you got it better than I do, because I, you know, I just don't, there's not a place for that. I mean, I think we're out of that and we're just leaving out of Black History Month to celebrate Blacks having equality, but to say that you're only concerned with one project <sighs> seems, pretty damn, seems pretty damn discriminatory to me. Doug, Madam Chair, yeah. Madam right. Chair, let me clarify. This evening, my concern is about a developer who we all know has been very, very powerful in terms of what he's done for Lake Park. And we have all seen that project and hope that he would build a, pro a similar project in Riviera Beach. When I say I'm not concerned about anything else, of course I'm concerned about other developers, but for, th for the purposes of this discussion tonight, I'm concerned that we not drive away that good developer. And, and I, I would love to hear, there's a certain person waiting to make a public comment about this, and I would love to hear him, and I sh I'm sure we'll get to that shortly. Madam Chair? Go ahead. So I, I guess that's the concern, and I'm, uh, I'm supposed to address the chair, but to my colleague, you're setting a policy that is going to completely go on for generations. So being just concerned with this developer tonight based on this policy that we're setting, we're enacting a policy. And this same policy has been enacted since 2006. So what we're doing tonight, you're going to be catering to the one parcel of land and you have to realize that it's going to affect the entire process of the IHCPUD, the MEHOP, the minority uh, participation, the housing crisis that we're in. And you can't just be concerned with that one land, one piece of land when we have individuals who can't afford to even move into those condos. I'm very concerned with the housing crisis we have and the workforce housing and the affordable housing and the obtainable housing. So that is my concern when it comes to this process and what we're going to implement a policy for because essentially individuals that we're trying to cater to can't afford to live over there. Madam Chair, Go ahead. So I'm going to finish my comments. No one on this dais has done I'm more gonna, in this city. I'm going to finish my on. comments. Hold on. I, I don't so go right on. ahead. Go right ahead. So, so essentially, you're saying that you want to clarify your comments. We only have to go off of what your word is and your statements and what you actually put on the record. So for clarity's sake, what you stated was that you're only concerned about this organization and running them away. I'm asking this organization to please and trust that the city will do what's right because you have an amazing staff with amazing council and the purpose of democracy is to have disagreements and not be disagreeable. But I'm just responding to your statements that you put on the record and I disagree with them. I can do that without being disagreeable with you. Madam Thank you, Chair. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Dr. Rosa. My question's related to whether or not that specific developer because he had already purchased property with an understanding of what the uh, ordinance was gonna stipulate for him, whether he was grandfathered. That does not have anything to do with any future development that goes on in the city. Of course you wanna set policy for all of the, de the development that goes on. That was not my intention to say that. It's, it's not the way, it's, it's not what I was thinking. My thinking was that this particular developer who is an excellent developer, we want to keep in the city, it should be, I think, should have some consideration given to the fact that he purchased land based on uh, conversations that existed before this, these changes. That's all. And, and by the way, I don't think there's anyone on this dais right now who has done more for workforce development than I have in this city. So please don't accuse me of not caring about the people or not caring about housing, et cetera. It's, it's just not, uh, it's, it's an unfair comment. All right, so Mr. Sermons, you are looking for direction under the policy consideration. Number two, adjustment to the fee in lieu of construction, or we're moving on to the next section. Uh, yes, if, if there's no direction here, we would maintain the ordinance as it was on first reading. Okay. All right, I hear none. Yes, Madam, Madam Chair, Mr. Sermons. 
you 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 glazed over this really quick, but you said there's a provision to petition for for relief outside of the fees. For relief, relief of the fee to be paid to the city, yes. For the bonus? Correct. In what section? Just a moment, please. Because that's not before us, correct? I'm sorry? That's, that subsection is not before us, correct? In amending? Um, it is the, the entire um, proposed amendment is in the, the second packet that you have, not the PowerPoint. I would just need to locate the section that that language is um, contained in. So 26-9 related policies and administration under A. In recognition of the value of CPUD, IHCPUD and IPUD projects to downtown uh, revitalization and or the general economy of the city, the city shall have the authority to waive by majority vote, approve a developer's petition to waive in part or portions of the contribution amounts based on the following. And then it gives a criteria for consideration if the uh, council does decide to waive that. Can you repeat the section? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Page 18. 26-9. Which page is it? 26-9 related policies and administration. Page the second to last page. <clears throat> section A. Question, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Mrs. Summons, have you seen this in other municipalities that's offering this bonus that the amounts be waived based on, I guess, what I would see is what we consider <clears throat> some exigent circumstances in which there's going to be a creation of some sort of other benefits like job? It's possible that it's in other cities. I cannot. Okay. Um, say whether it's there or not. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, you still you have the floor still, Mr. Sermons. Where we where did you arrive at the enforcement violations? How did that come about? <coughs> How did it come about? Um, you're looking at D on page uh, 18. Yes. Um, this is uh, from research of um, other localities, and we found language, and <laughs> modified language that we felt could be applicable. Okay, so the one issue that if we continue to maintain the provision of having an employment option, is there an escape hatch or some sort of relief offered in the event that this other portion is unattainable as far as locating minorities. Does that now default back to the to the petition part, where you could petition the city council, whatever that looks like? The petition, I believe, the petition only pertains to the amount of fees that the uh, development will have to pay to the city. To my again, my understanding from our reading is that it does not apply to the empo uh, employment component. Is that what you were asking? Well, I guess I'm trying to still find out if a person can't fulfill the requirements of the employment piece because the market is not there. I mean, all I see is punitive violations. So I do have slides on that section as well where we can talk about some options okay. we're proposing. All right, I'm awaiting that, thank you. All right, so keeping the current structure, is where we're at. You wanna go on, Mr. Simmons? Sorry, Madam Chair. You wanna move on to the next section or? Uh, yes, I can. If there's no uh, further discussion or recommendations here, we'll keep the ordinance as is, as it relates to that for now. Okay. Uh, the next uh, proposed revision is to the language regarding the housing trust fund. 
Uh, right now, there is almost no language uh, governing that account. Uh, what we have uh, proposed um, for the account where the any fee in lieu of contributions uh, will be made is that um, the purpose would be clarified, stating that uh, to provide funds for the city to use to build, preserve, rehabilitate, or otherwise create affordable, attainable workforce housing, and to support the provision of affordable, attainable workforce housing opportunities to income eligible residents. Land acquisition for the construction of affordable, attainable workforce housing units shall be deemed an eligible expense of the housing trust fund monies. Expenditures from the housing trust fund must be for these purposes. In addition to uh, this statement of purpose of the account and eligible expenditures, we are proposing a language regarding oversight. Oversight of the housing trust fund shall be provided by a team of staff, including but not limited to the representatives of administration, the finance department, development services, and the CRA. A financial report on the housing trust fund account shall be provided to the city council annually on or before October 1st. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Mr. Simmons, I guess you're at the point where you're going to take questions. Yes, sir. Um, members, should we even include the CRA? Simply because, I mean, that's literally something that's set to sunset in 16 years. So we're going to set forth for a permanent ordinance to include that. In fact, I think it's probably more flexible and beneficial to say a designee appointed by the city council to fill that third seat. That's just my opinion. I mean, because lastly, I mean, we haven't touched this ordinance in what almost 18, 17 years. Mm -hmm. So it just seems to me that if it's going to be another 17 years that I'm not saying that. In fact, I think we're on the on the mend and we're getting a lot more efficient with amending our ordinances. But I just don't know why we should commit to the CRA since we don't we're, we're, we're certain that that won't be around forever. Madam Chair. Are you finished, Mr. McCoy? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I'd be in agreement with my colleague, an appointee uh, by the council, because I understand that the reference for the CRA is to possibly have a, a current representative from our CRA or CDC. Uh, Ms. Anita Jenkins would be a great representative appointed now, but if we have an appointee that's done by the council, that would allow for us to fill that with a representative that is working with our CRA, our CDC, and other boards. So. Instead of our CRA, which is sunsetting in uh, 2039, I agree that it needs to be an appointed member. Anyone else? All right. All right. I have noted that change and I'll proceed. Yeah. And we're a city council, not a town council. I did notice that. That is another edit that is reflected on the PowerPoint, but not on your um, papers. And I do apologize for that again. Madam Chair, yes. so we're saying we're taking out the C CRA and just leaving the um, Administration, Finance, and Developmental Services Department? Is that what we're saying, Mr. Well, Summers? I heard that to add an appointee from City Council to add into that list. So a member of the board would be a part of this team? I don't know. I don't agree with that. Madam Chair, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, with with respect, if you say an appointee of the board, it could go either way. You, you do have that flexibility that in the event, you could have a member of the, the board or you can have a member of the public. But if, if it is the intent to have a member of the public, I think it should be a little bit more descriptive to, to that. Follow up. So hold on, Ms. Lanier. So we're talking about a... If you're saying a member of the public, so we're not talking about someone who either sits at this board or is an employee of the city. Is that what you mean? Madam Chair, I, I believe that it was the board's desire to incorporate that it would be an appointee of the sitting, uh, the council. So not somebody in, I don't think the intent was a member of the board, but if you say an appointee, it could be argued at some point that it could be a member of the board as well. Um, that's what my understanding of, of appointee is. So when you say appointee, does it have, I mean, when we talk about that, I think we need to define that it is a person who is a member of the public. Well, Madam Chair, if I may. Go ahead. Or it would be in a, you know, um, 
an appointee that is not a member of the the city council or something because you, you all are still members of the public too so you know they're i just think that if we're going to do an appointee it should be someone from the public it should be a citizen that sits at this housing trust fund board to um, make decisions about this funding because that is their money so i think that you know when you talk about an appointee that that person should be a person from the public Madam Chair. Can you finish, Ms. Lanier? Um, yes. Go ahead. I can recommend that it reads something uh, to the effect of, uh, and a member of the public appointed by city council. That sounds good. Yes, that's fine. OK. okay. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Um, To clear up something, there's not this. This this is the only function by this board. They don't have any functions to decide on the expenditure of any funds. So, Chair Pro Tem, I don't know what what the impression is, but that's not what's intended in this ordinance. In fact, that's the only role is to present this to the body, but they're not expending anything. In fact, that is solely dedicated to the council. Madam Chair, go ahead. Yeah, I do understand that, but I think that there should be a citizen representative um, anyway, that regardless of the decisions that are made, I know that they cannot make budget decisions. They cannot say uh, the, um, the ordinance clearly states that what the MEHOP is. It gives a definition of how when the money goes into a trust fund, where it will go to affordable housing, to workforce housing. But I think that a citizen should be a part of that process. And I know they can't make a recommendation, but to have a person sit with these individuals who is a member of the public, I think will give more confidence to the public. Madam Chair? Yes. The time is now 9.46. All right. Anyone want to make a motion to finish out the this item here? Move to extend yeah. indefinitely. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Dies for a lack of a second. Members, I mean, I got to get on the road to go to Orlando tonight. So, I mean, I'm trying to hang in there. And literally, if this doesn't, if we don't get this done, there's going to be really harsh legal consequences. And I'm going to just tell you that right now. Do because we have the city's a, under a deadline to complete this. Do we have a motion to extend to finish this item? Do we have any motion to extend beyond 10 o'clock? Move to adjourn then, Madam Chair. If they don't want to extend, let's just go ahead and adjourn. Can I put that on the floor? We still have 13 minutes. Yeah, but I, I mean, my motion is on the floor. All right. Is there I mean, because obviously this is going to take a lot longer. Is if there a second? Do we have a second to adjourn? Dies for lack of a second. Follow right. up. Yes. So I, I guess I don't understand. This is very complex, and we're supposed to be able to hash this out. Hence, another reason why I don't think we should get this at the last minute, because it creates more questions than it provides answers. And to the point that was being made, if I could just step back, I think this ordinance needs to also be changed because I don't think I've seen anywhere in any statute or law or code section that a housing trust fund is referred to as a team. Obviously, the designation or I think the correct terminology would be a committee. Um, so I would certainly recommend that that gets incorporated into the item. Secondly, um, back to the point of the council person, these folks won't be making any budgets. They're simply providing a report annually to say, what monies have been collected. Any expenditures would have to come to the board. So I, I think clearly there's a lot of disconnect because there's still this reference that there's a budget or some sort of expenditure of monies, Councilwoman. So it's, I know it's always not easy to read all of this stuff, but I don't want you to get this impression because I literally just had somebody to text me and I tell you how crazy this is, I provide this for public records. So they're gonna take away section eight from people and I'm like, so that's just the impression that folks get when you have things that are very much ambiguous. And I think we need to spend the time now to making sure that it's clear so we don't have these problems later. All right. So we're past item number 
I'm not item number three. Number so three, no questions that? or comments? Anything else for that? My question is, is he going to incorporate that? Incorporate what? The reference mm -hmm. to a committee as opposed to a team. You want it to say a committee instead of team? You don't think it should? I'm asking you a question. Which well, I mean, one do you I've want? I've never seen a statute that refers to a team. I mean, that's just, I mean, we're running government, not a clubhouse. All right. So you're suggesting that it's changed from team? Well, I'm, I'm not suggesting anything. If it's that difficult, Councilwoman, I mean, I'm just saying, why does it seem like I'm the only one that's thinking this through? Like, I've never seen an ordinance that refers to anybody as a team. Mr. McCoy, you have an opportunity to share what you would like to see. So I'm asking you, what is it that you want to see? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. I'd be in agreement with Councilman McCoy to change it from team to committee. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right. So we're going to number four. Yes. Um, and I can move quickly through um, the remaining parts as much as I can. Uh, the next section is related to the insertion of the IHC PUD zoning district into the MEHOP ordinance. And I think we have covered this, so I won't spend a lot of time on that. Um, this is what it would look like in the uh, table four, which shows the zoning districts and how they, um, uh, what bonuses are eligible for them. So we would insert IHC PUD as an eligible zoning district there. Um, the fourth change we're proposing uh, is an insertion of a mechanism for a post-construction conversion of resort hotel suites. Again, this uh, is another component we have been discussing for uh, about a year now. Um, we have not changed anything in regards to this language uh, since the very first workshop we had about this uh, last year. Um, I would um, add that um, these conversions would only be allowed when uh, the proposed development has the minimum number of parking spaces per unit already constructed. And I would also add, based on uh, the conversation during first reading, that the difference of impact fees paid when the development initially comes in versus the additional units they want to convert uh, would have to be due upon that conversion as well. And uh, so I am noting that as well based on first reading. Uh, six, in expansion of uh, language uh, related to minority employment. Uh, this part we did have uh, extensive dialogue on uh, during first reading and previously. Um, we did make the change that a development would only have to be in compliance with one of these three components listed under uh, employment. And those three components essentially are um, create a, a quota system for hiring that the development has to meet. Um, and those three are uh, at least 20% of part-time and general labor must be a minority, um, must be of uh, minority groups. Uh, two, at least five minority sub-trades must be uh, hired by the project. And three, at least eight minority professionals uh, must be a part of the team. Again, that's how the, the ordinance is currently structured. And we know and have discussed the, the fact that it could be a challenge for a project to uh, meet these requirements right now based on the amendment we discussed during uh, the changes we discussed during first reading a project would only have to meet one of these three um, so that does allow additional breathing room uh, with them uh, satisfying this component but staff is also proposing a different approach whereas instead of a quota system uh, we focus on targeted recruitment um, and in this uh, scenario, the applicant must provide evidence of affirmative marketing prior to opening jobs to the general public. And this would require them to do things that are more readily quantifiable and verifiable by staff, um, including hosting a, a minimum number of job fairs, utilizing employment sources um, such as uh, Career Source Palm Beach, uh, utilizing city platforms to advertise jobs, and including um, jobs page that the city uh, would uh, host um, our social media platforms, posting announcements around the cities, recruiting at community events. These are things that are more um, readily verifiable by staff um, in case uh, there's um, too much uncertainty as to whether these uh, components can be met in terms of meeting quotas. Uh, so that is another proposal that staff um, would like to bring up for consideration. So we could keep the quota system. Um, again, it, they're only required to meet one of the three alternatives right now. We could change it completely to a, an affirmative marketing system, or we could have a hybrid approach where it uh, requires affirmative marketing, but also one of the three 
um, again, there's options there, and, and we just wanted to uh, propose an alternative approach because of uh, unreadiness expressed previously. Madam Chair. Hold on, um, Dr. Botel. We need to stop for a minute and allow our public comment person to speak on this item, and then we can, whatever time we have left, we can finish up the conversation. Mr. Wayne Richards. Go ahead. Good evening, Honorable Mayor. Good evening. Council Chairperson, Commission Staff, Wayne Richards on behalf of Oculina, formerly known as Wind dixie Reimagined. Can we please go back to the, the photograph or the display that had the IHCPUD Oculina? Very helpful. You can do the Mr. Sermons. Can you stop the clock? We can't stop the clock and no, that's fine. just go ahead and talk. All right. Don't, no, do not stop the clock. We still got three minutes, so keep it going. You might recall back in November of 2021, approximately 16 months ago, this commission enthusiastically said, we want whatever Lake Park has, bring it to us next door at the Winn-Dixie site. Uh, the, the development team went ahead and purchased the property and you direct the staff. Staff, figure out how to make this happen. The good news is staff did it. Staff decided to do it in a two-step process. It took 16 months to get where we are today, but staff decided it would be a two-step process. The first step is to utilize the IHCPUD for that area. The IHCPUD allowed for 300 feet. Lake Park is 300 feet. We need 300 feet. Staff said, well, we're gonna knock it down to 240 feet, but let you buy back with the MIHOP. We're not fighting that. Business, the business community needs certainty. The business community needs to be able to read something in paper and make financial and business decisions. The good news is staff said, don't worry. It's a two-step process. We'll give you the ICPD. We're gonna knock it down, but let you buy it back. So please don't just think these are extra units. These aren't extra units. You're, you're letting us buy back what we needed. We're not fighting that. We don't want to lose any more time. We need an ordinance that allows us to build what you said you wanted. We went out and bought the property. We just want to do what you said you wanted. So if it is your goal to utilize the ICPUD, knock it down to 240 feet, let us use the MIHOP to get it back up to 300. We're okay with that. We're not fighting that. The concern is the back and the forth, the back and the forth. So we're generally okay with how it stands. You will note we're at close to $5 million. When I presented to you in 2021, we were at one and a half million. Staff knocked it down to 240 feet. Let us buy it back to 300. <coughs> that's, that's over four and a half million dollars. My principal has said, Wayne, don't fight the numbers. Just give me some certainty or get something approved so we can move forward. I strongly urge you to approve what you have. We cannot wait much longer. The current project is mostly sold out and we need to move to Riviera Beach. Please approve this project as soon as you can. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sarnas. <clears throat> Yes, so again, staff is uh, proposing an alternative to a quota system to an uh, affirmative uh, or targeted marketing system uh, for employment. And uh, again, if uh, council can give us direction on that, I think that was the, the major outstanding item uh, that there was unreadiness on for the ordinance. Madam Chair. Are you finished, Mr. Um, with this section? Or are you, you want to put it back to where you are? I, so for number six, do you have a question regarding that, Dr. Botel? Yes, about minority hiring. I, I thought that we had a conversation about the possibility of adding a component that would require or suggest to developers that they allow apprenticeships on the site. And that could be in addition to the one of the three components that we have listed already, or in lieu of, I, I mean, I... I it probably should be an addition to because I would think that most developers would want to welcome students from Dwyer's Construction Magnet or students from North Tech. And that way we would begin to develop the local talent that we seem to see as not being enough, you know, we don't have enough of, as some people think we don't have enough of. Um, I would like to see us develop local tradespeople so that they can participate in future projects. And I, I really feel strongly about this, that we should have 
some component that requires or strongly suggests, probably requires better, uh, that developers accept apprenticeships from entities like Dwyer or North Tech. And if staff could work on that, I'd appreciate it. Yes, understood. And we do have some uh, language that we could utilize for that from a different section of our code. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. So, Mr. Simmons, the target market, I'm sorry, the targeted recruitment portion. Yes. All a person has to do is show effort that they at least try to attract minority or local employees. That's the only requirement. They would have to document those efforts, but yes. Okay. I, that seems like a rule that's going to be abused. Um, it's 10 o'clock. We have a motion to adjourn. Are we almost done? Nobody wants, you don't want to stay, but you don't want to go? <laughs> what? Well, I mean, if we have a motion to adjourn, it's 10 o'clock. Chair, motion to extend for 10 minutes. Yeah. To what time? 10 10. 10 10. I second that. Okay. Madam Clerk? Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Councilperson Botel? Yes. yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Chair Pro Tim Lanier? Yes. Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. That vote passes, Madam Chair. All right. Go ahead. Uh, okay, Madam Chair. so. Okay. Who's it on? Me? You were still talking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Cool. So, Mr. Simmons, so all, I guess my question was, are we asking for developers or potential applicants to sh just do an effort and demonstrate that to us? This is uh, proposed because of the, um, the concerns of members of the board with the existing system, which requires they meet certain numbers for hiring and that it may not be possible uh, for them and it would be difficult for staff to monitor and enforce that they're maintaining the hiring that's required under this. Uh, so this is an alternative to it uh, that we could quickly and uh, clearly verify that a, a development has met the requirements. So again, this is as proposed as an alternative to or in addition, uh, in addition to uh, what's currently in the code. But again, we're uh, providing options to see what um, what the desires of the board are. I see done. Are you done, Mr. Lawson? I mean, who is talking about quote? So both options, the targeted option and the quota option are going to be incorporated into this. If it's the desire of the board, we can do both or we can do one or the other. I mean, I'm, I'm not even sure I understand. I mean, <clears throat> This isn't getting very uh, helpful at this point. I mean, this is my first time seeing this. I don't really know the implication just to say it. I mean, I, I just think, yeah, I, I would like to see both or either or. Madam Chair. Are you finished, Mr. McCoy? Yes. Go ahead. I, I think that these are reasonable to ask of everybody. I mean, we've, all, we've already reduced the number of mandatory things from two to one. So they only have to meet one of those requirements. And, and again, I would like to see the, the apprenticeship piece added. But it seems to me that anybody, anybody coming into the city should host a minimum number of job fairs, should utilize career source, should utilize city platforms, should post announcements around the city, and should recruit at community events. That's not a terrible lift for anybody. And, and it makes sense to me that anybody who's coming into the city to do work here should meet those requirements. I would, I would suggest that we make it a hybrid approach, keeping the current structure, asking for one, and then requiring people to do at least these things in terms of attempting to hire minority applicants. Madam Chair. Yes. Are I'm you finished? We'll tell them, sorry. You finished? I'm finished. Thank you. Go ahead. Hey, I'm in support of the hybrid approach, Madam Chair. I am as well. Anyone else? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Sermons. Uh, next, the uh, language for uh, housing if the developer um, builds on site. Again, just to make sure there's clarity on what the expectations are. So there were uh, several uh, points of language added to this section uh, to talk about the fact that they have to develop the housing plan and present it as a part of their proposed site plan. That'll show where those units will be. I'm um, establishing the number of them um, and and um, 
referring to the fact that they will have to have a, a housing agreement um, if they are going with that section of providing the units uh, themselves, either on-site or, or off-site, as well as performance measures. So again, we believe this language was something that was missing before considering the amount of value these uh, benefits are providing to the development, but just making sure there's additional clarity on what the expectations are. Uh, so we have added uh, that language in the code as well. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Mr. Simmons, what about the transfer of development rights? I brought that up last meeting simply yeah. because I don't know that a developer is going to be interested in doing it. If they convey that responsibility over to somebody else, can that be permissible under the code? Yes. So um, there are uh, models of uh, TDR programs, as we generally use the acronym in, in planning. The county has one, and that is their uh, primary way for giving uh, development densities. They are uh, complex programs that uh, require the city to establish um, almost a bank of what the development rights are, where they're being tra uh, transferred to, and a deed system. Uh, the main thing is you have to have land that you want to protect to create for one of those programs to be successful. Um, you And for the county, of course, uh, out west near the agricultural areas, it does make sense to have a, a TDR program um, where persons can preserve that land and transfer those developable or additional developable units uh, to other properties of land. Um, we haven't identified large uh, sections of land in Riviera Beach that, that would make sense for. We do have um, a, a wetlands area on Singer Island that we could consider, but for it to create a long-term bank, um, we don't know that that would be ideal for the city considering the amount of um, just overhead and staff time it takes to maintain a land bank. But it, it is something that could be done in a almost entirely separate ordinance because of the complexities of a TDR program. Um, but that's that's what it would require. And if it is a, um, a, a strong interest of the board, we can uh, work on that as well. All right, we have five minutes left. Any other questions or comments for this? No. All right. No. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Just to make a comment on this presentation, the reason I didn't support my colleague's motion to extend indefinitely is because we're not going to continue to just allow for a, a lack of respect for our time to have us here all night. I can't support that. We're not going to support that anymore. The issue right now is not the fact that um, this developer is nervous or scared about us not getting this process done. It's the fact it took so long to get this in front of us. I asked for this in my agenda review, which will at least give me 24 hours to review. Councilman McCoy asked for this last week. We have to do the proper process and procedure. Mr. Evans, this is on your staff. This is what we're asking for you because I'm not gonna be here indefinitely anymore waiting on something that should have been reviewed before because then I wouldn't have all these questions. So if we're going to continue to move effectively and efficiently, then we have to make sure we move accordingly. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, Mr. Summers. Uh, the last section was uh, related policies and administration. We expanded language in here to address enforcement, uh, uh, just to uh, clarify some of the options that the city would have to enforce violators of this ordinance, and that would include code enforcement um, all the way to uh, legal um, options that the city could take against a development that was not in compliance. And uh, that is the uh, completion of the staff presentation on this item. All right, any questions or comments? All right, so this is gonna come back to us on the 15th, but prior to that, we'll have copies of it so that we have any questions, we can have them addressed prior to that meeting. Yes, Madam, yes, Chair. Madam Chair. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Yeah. So moved. Uh -huh.